episode 54. 54. Man, oh man. How far it? we've come, cuz I can't believe it. I, I know. I mean, we're uh we're dedicated. We, you know, we're here every week. And uh I think that's what it's really about. It's uh it's really it's really the growth of the channel, I think that helps, right? The the listeners that we have, the global audience that we have. Um you know, it just keeps us coming every week. And it's a place for us to discuss this because, you know, it's just not normal. The things we talk about, you can't just, you know, sit on a dinner table and discuss some of these things. <laughs> <You> absolutely cannot. <laughs> or or like in a work meeting or something or, you know. Like a, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I would love to talk about this with my coworkers and I, I, never, I never will, but. I would just end up screaming about it. Not like I'm not like I'm uh in an argument or something, but just like yeah. this exists, this happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Outside. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And get passionate about it. And like, yeah. especially if they're if they're newbies and they're just starting, you're like, well, wait a minute. You know, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, I make that mistake all the time, especially with family when it comes to politics, and I have to calm down. Like, yeah, I catch myself like, why am I screaming, man? No one wants to talk to you if you want to scream. <laughs> it's it's true. Uh, yeah. but, but you know, people uh, when they you know they start talking about these things, they well, I was thinking about like politics, religion, the, the two yeah. things you're not supposed yeah. to talk about at yeah. the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you can't, you, you just you don't talk about it, you don't, yeah. Unfortunately, it's because it's everyone has such a differing uh opinions and and never goes anywhere. You're not gonna change someone's uh opinion, right. By arguing with him, although debates are good, right? But I guess someone has to get there themselves. Yep, right, exactly. I, I, I totally agree. Um, yeah, I totally. And agree. don't be angry or whatever when someone finally comes around, you know, to something that you, yeah, of, because you might, you, you're. I mean, I went through so. I just always keep my mind open. You know, I try not to be too naive about things. But you know, I've I went down the whole flat Earth thing like a decade ago. Um, even concave earth was a thing too with me. Mm -hmm, for like, mm -hmm. you know, I would say a good, a good year. Like I'm not kidding that long. And then, you know, just breaking out of that is not easy. I see most, most people don't break out of that, especially flat earthers. They just, they're stuck in there. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. You know, I've gotten to the point where just I'm willing to listen, um, yeah, yes. and, you know, and hear, hear different ideas. And, yeah. you know, I, I hope, our listeners to the Uncovering Anomalies podcast Woo! Are also willing to listen. Yes. Action, desire, <laughs> romance. <laughs> I can what? only do, do those three. <laughs> <laughs> then, Pablo Francisco, I went to go see him like five years ago. I remember uh, that actually. I remember it's, so de it's so depressing. <laughs> yeah. So depressing because I really look up to that dude, it's, especially his old stuff. Like he was a genius, absolute yeah, he, genius. He really was. You know what's funny is I I cannot uh, watch stand up anymore. I just don't think yeah. I, I just don't think it's funny. I'm with you. I'm with you. They're too careful or something. Even uh, Ricky Gervais. We, I think we spoke about it. I think it's called not woke or I'm not woke or something. But he was pretty yeah. woke in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you know? I remember, you know, even right now, uh, current. The current the current guy is dave Chappelle, right yeah right i, I don't i he doesn't he doesn't do his because i remember some of his stuff from when i was younger and he was so funny so funny Dude, yeah, and yeah. now he just kind of like lectures it's hard to explain he just yeah changed, he does he does social commentary right yeah I, he changes yeah. his style i, I mean God, there was this one bit where he is he's talking about a homeless guy on, on the subway. <laughs> I think I know which one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I dodged it like the Matrix. And <laughs> and it I just thought I just thought you know that was the one of the funniest things I'd ever heard. And now it's just kind of like he, he just he kind of acts like a teacher now where he just he's standing mm -hmm. there and talking to you. Do you uh do you ever listen to Owen Benjamin? Owen he's Benjamin. That he was he was he used to be in the mainstream. He's been in movies and stuff, but I, he got too 
uh, too racy for especially like I think it was during 2018, 2017. You know, he got he, he just he has no filter. He doesn't care, man. And he'll be racist to everyone, not just one group. Right. Right. But a particular group got him completely canceled. So now he's back on Twitter. So he's on there. He's on Rumble. But he's been, he was completely canceled. He even left Hollywood and became a farmer. He's a farmer in Boise, Idaho. What? Yes, dude. So he's got this farm and he does streams. So he does both. He'll, he'll farm and take care and, and provide for his family that way. But then he streams every day at 2 p.m. And dude, the guy is seriously one of the funniest people on the planet. Like even his tweets, they are so hilarious. God, what a uh, life path. Uh, I know, right? And he just he so he talks about how important it is to be self-sufficient. He, he's you know, he shows people like he's got chickens and what he does with that and milking the cows and and at the same time he does comedy. It's it's pretty cool. That is pretty that is that is really cool. Yeah, you should check him out. Uh yeah, well. Yeah, he's really funny. So we got a lot to go to this week, as usual. I mean, I can't believe how much goes on. I cannot believe. Yeah, um, the the skiff meetings, the the people coming out of that. Yeah. Uh, oh man, it just they looked so scared, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the stuff they talked about was just, uh, you know. Yeah, let's get to it. All right, so I I do want to start out with something last week we we ended on was JFK X that documentary by Jay Widener. Mm -hmm. So he did an interview uh, with Beyond Mystic. Uh, I think he's on Rumble. He he always has these interviews for like to talk about the Elohim and stuff like that. So Jay Widener is starting to do that. But with JFK X, did you watch the documentary? It's on it's on Prime. Not very. Uh, I don't I don't think I got to it. Okay, so I mean, he basically says JFK faked his death. Um, oh wow i know and but and he shows it in the in in the documentary it's, there's a lot more of course that they show but is, is some clips here um a few clips basically what they did is they used ai to um to make the zapruder film uh more visible or what's in the zapruder film more visible um because apparently whoever had whoever released the zapruder film spliced it they say at like i forget what frame it is 212 or something like that and they splice it and put another one because they were trying to hide. They wanted the the car to be underneath the cam under the camera when something happened. And you, we can quickly see here what that thing is. Great. But then, do you think that's why when like Trump, because it came to him, he made the decision not to disclose. When it came to him and Judge Napolitano had a phone call with him, he goes, "Why don't you come on, release them?" And he's like, "Judge, if you see what I saw, you would not release it." He goes, "Trust me." So. Is it that or is it UFOs? Because then the UFO community is like, well, you know, because <laughs> no, UFO. I just think I think it's one of those things where <clears throat> uh, I can't remember the name of the comedian. I think it's one of those things where they pull you into the back room, the, the true powers in charge, pull you into the back room, and they show you the JFK assassination from an angle that nobody's seen before. <laughs> and they You've go, seen if, that you, before. <laughs> if you, you know, <laughs> if, if you talk, this is what's going to happen to you. <laughs> I think, <laughs> right on the on the first day. Yeah, I uh, think. Welcome I think, to your first day of being president. Please sit down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. See that? That's that's our what president was he? Thirty seven or something or forty? I don't know. But I, yeah, I he is, he, is, he uh he spoke out too much against the deep state. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, let's 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 see. Jay Widener here on JFKX. It's on Prime. Cool documentary. Uh, and anyway, entertaining or new information, whatever, right? Keep your minds open. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. The problem is it's it's still a secret now, classified forever. That's what Biden said. Yep. That's yeah. the way it works. Yeah. Lucky. Wish it goes. Okay. Let's go back to. Uh, let me see if I can bring this up for the audience here. We'll play this clip here. I'm not sure I'm exactly at the right spot here, but we see that first scene here where see he's holding. He seems some. to be grabbing something in the Warren Commission he said he's holding at his neck but if that were the case here we'd already see big blood spatter which we don't but again we'll move past here and explain this here I'll keep going here but explain what you think is the sequence of events here okay. um, and why let's, it's being obfuscated at the bottom roll, of the screen let's roll through this and then we'll roll back again okay okay that's the film the high quality film you notice there's no brain matter or anything on the back trunk or anything let's go back and start that again then i'll show you yeah and now. so far uh, except for that little puff of smoke around his head there's no blood in on anybody else on the seat in front on, on uh, his wife either so let me just roll back here go back. it's a little bit harder to do on this screen here. that's a good point i mean there's not blood yeah. everywhere 
I mm-hmm. I always thought it was interesting that Jackie uh, ran for the back of the car. That was her first instinct. Right. So they're going to show you why. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. Yeah. There you go. All right. So he comes behind the freeway sign and he's supposedly grabbing the neck wound with no blood, but he's <laughs> not really grabbing the neck at all. What he's really doing is he's reaching into his jacket and he's pulling something out and he's placing it right here on the right side of his face. And you can clearly see it in the shot. And it's right casting here. a shadow move it, move in the noonday sun. There it is. It's right there on the side of his face. Jim mm-hmm. Fetzer, who studied the, the Bruder film extensively, he calls that the blob. And he believes that it was done post um, uh, 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 in the studio later with, with a paint or something. He can't understand what he's looking at. So he writes uh, in his book, The The Bruder Film Hoax, that the blob is evidence that this film has been tampered with. But he never questions why there is no blood on the neck wound and why Kennedy actually is not really gripping his neck. If you actually look at the shot where he's supposedly gripping his neck, his hands are actually here. They're not up here. And and, and, and the right hand... Do you think to notice, too, if he's shot in the neck, his white collar is still white, his yes. cufflinks and the cuff there are still absolutely white. She has no blood on her. Uh, up so, oh. <laughs> like, this it would be sense. hitting, honestly, just oh, yeah. I don't want to gross anybody out. Yeah. It would be hitting the back seat of the car right. uh, in front of them. It would right. be shooting out. Uh, I mean, it, right. it's the it, it would be so grotesque that you would, really wouldn't even be able to look at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there's no blood at all. And when they took a picture of the back seat of the car at Parkland Hospital, um, there was probably a tablespoon of blood right. uh, on the back seat, something like that. It didn't even look real, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, a head wound and a neck wound at that point would be <laughs> devastating. Okay. So, um, how far further else do I go with this? So, essentially, here, spell it out to people. Here we go. What yeah. do you think just happened here? So, there, there seems to be a coordination also with his wife. She seems to be in on the move. Uh, why is she um, hopping on the back of the limousine also in the mainstream news? They were saying that she was trying to get a piece of his head that had flown out. Oh that's, that's the main story. But how do you associate that now with the squib technology? What is she doing? What's her squib. role? Squib. He's saying it's a squib. All right. So first I want to point out that. So you know what a squib is, right? Yeah. It's a it's a fake bullet like. Yes. A thing. Exactly. Yeah. That, that you pull on and it explodes and they use it in movies. Right. Uh, yep. Right. And Jay Widener, he's a movie. Uh, he's he's made move, lots of movies before. And he's a producer. So he knows about this technology. That's why he recognized it. Interesting. Weird, huh? Uh, when the car comes behind the freeway sign, every single occupant in that car, the driver, the Secret Service agent to his right, John Connolly and John Connolly's wife are all looking at JFK. All of them. You can see mm-hmm. it in the film. All four people. Not ja- Jackie, though. Jackie is nonchalantly looking off to her left uh, as if nothing happened. Don't forget, high-powered rifle shots are ringing out here. 30 caliber rifle shots. I don't know if you know how loud those are, but they're really loud. And in a cavernous downtown area, it's going to be even louder. But nobody in the car is reacting to rifle shots. They're all looking at JFK. And uh, as soon as, uh, so so I'm just going to say it. Mm-hmm. So JFK, for reasons that we talk about in the uh, uh, movie. Um, Basically saying he, he found out, his brother found out that everyone's after him. The CIA is after him, the mob's after him, and he, they're going to kill him. Right. So it, apparently he tried to devise a way to fake it. Well, that's that's one way to do it. Um, I mean, yeah, everybody everybody disliked JFK. Um, Everyone. <laughs> that's why you know when you look at, when you look into when you look into uh, this quote unquote assassination. Yeah. Um, it, it, there's just there's so many directions to go, and it's yeah, so hard. Exactly. To, exactly. It's so hard to figure out what what the heck happened anti-cuban whatever cia for for firing you know the head of the mm-hmm, cia mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. mob israel i'm yep. sure counties of foreign na- other foreign nations so yeah there's always this it, it points to so many people so 
I guess that this might unify all that in a way, you know, if yeah. it's if it's true. You know that <laughs> this is the most interesting take I've seen on the, on the yeah. JFK assassination because so weird. Yeah, I mean, what the hell? What if he faked his own death? That's wild. Yeah. Let's see what Jay says. He places something right here on his face, and you can clearly see it. And Oliver Stone cuts those frames out of his movie, by the way. What? So you do, you do not see it in his movie. That's it's fun. clearly cut out of the movie. So for two full seconds after he comes from behind the freeway sign, we can see something weird on the side of his face. Then suddenly everybody's looking at him in the limousine. Jackie decides to get involved. She comes around to the front and looks at Jack see how uh, from the that? front. Oh, there we conveniently go yeah. down to where nobody can see anything. And um, uh, we can't see what she does. And then the head explodes. Jackie gets out of the car and runs over and picks something up. Uh, we could be that the Secret Service agent also was going after that same thing and then runs back into the car. Exactly the opposite of what any sane person would do if your husband had just been hit by a high-powered weapon one foot away from you. You would be on the floor of the car, cowering. Um, anybody would. It's not no disrespect to Jackie Kennedy. Anybody would be doing the same thing. But Jackie does the opposite. She goes out and exposes herself even more to the would-be shooters uh, intentionally grabbing something off the hood, which in our enhanced version, you can actually see. Um, so, um, so that's what she was going after. She was going after the squib. Well, she pulled it and exploded and went to the back of the car and she went to go get it. I, apparently, you know, I, 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 I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just think, um, people's reactions to things are different. And you, yeah. you you can't. It's your lizard brain that that mm -hmm. pops out and says, "Hey, you're gonna you're gonna do this. You're gonna do that." Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I've seen people using her reaction for so many different reasons. Um, you know, I always I always find it interesting that was her. You know, that was her instinct. Um, I, I I've heard it. the the guy in the front seat was the one that shot. You know. Yep. There's she, that too, yeah. And that he pulled the trigger. She's trying to run away. Um, uh, I I don't know. It, it it's tough. I mean, it is. Like it is. like I said, this is the most interesting uh, take I've seen on the whole thing. Well, um, Jay's got some crazy, like, interesting things on everything. Like, did you see his uh, his his series on uh, the moon landings and um, uh, and Kubrick? Mm-hmm. So scared the hell out of me. You should you should definitely watch. He's got a two part series on Kubrick and <clears throat> and the moon landings. So freaky how he's saying Kubrick put that put that in his movies. Uh, oh, and that he that's proved, right. Yeah, that's right. You were yeah. telling me about that. That's all Jay Widener, man. He's just I don't know if he's either very intuitive or he's just completely crazy out there. <laughs> no, you know I think when there's a big event that happens, people want to figure out the truth and you know so they yeah they look they look for different things and you know yada yada yeah they look for different things and they want to they want to see things that no one else has seen yet you know again yeah secrecy uh what's he saying here but my contention is is that for various reasons john f kennedy all right all right I mean, we can we can we can move 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 along um, but definitely, I recommend people watching the documentary. Uh, it's well made. Jay's just, in there and he's explaining everything. Yeah, I'm just really excited. We're talking about conspiracies that don't involve UFOs. I, not yeah. that I, not that I've got a problem <laughs> with that, but we are a conspiracy podcast, and yes. this is essentially. Well, I was going to say this is the original conspiracy, but Roswell was right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what started. That's what put the lockdown on the government, at least. Yeah. No, the the whole JFK thing, and I've recommended uh, uh, um, eleven twenty two sixty three uh, book before. Um, I, I think mean, I bought that <coughs> on maybe on Audible. It, dude, <laughs> that that book is seriously so good. But 
No, this is fascinating to a lot of people um, because yeah. JFK, his death. I mean, I'm, we're not joking. He it was a coup, man. He was targeted by so many different people and it freaked everybody. everybody out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wonder if RFK did the same thing. Then you know, I no, probably not. But anyway, it entertaining at worst, right? Yeah. <laughs> and very disturbing if it's true. Yeah, exactly. So uh, there's a lot of talk of, of of Roswell. So I didn't know this. The the guy who um, who helped on the Roswell movie. It was like a TV movie with um. Oh my God! Now I'm forget Sh- not Shatner. Sh- uh, Sheen uh, Sheen's dad. Uh, Martin, uh, Sheen. Martin Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen. Yep. Yeah, that movie. So apparently the, the guy who made uh, the ship for that movie then made a real uh, rendering of the Roswell craft. And he um, he goes from the testimony of multiple witnesses who were uh, the retired United States Army Counterintelligence Corps atom bomb security agents guarding all atom bomb manufacturing, testing, and deployment. So there's a video. Here is a video. William McDonald worked with Tester's company to design an authentic model based on the recovered Roswell craft. In 1993, I was hired as the concept designer to the movie Roswell. And after completing that assignment, I decided to find out what the real spacecraft and the real bodies looked like, having nothing to do with the film. My research took me into a four-year journey of interviewing military officers and other researchers who supplied with me the data that I needed to do full forensic composites of what the flight crew and the spacecraft looked like that crashed at Roswell on July 4th, 1947 (laughs) at 11 o'clock in the evening. Much to my surprise, it was not a disc. It was a winged vehicle, a wave rider, one of those lifting body, transatmospheric, high speed recon type of vehicles. It was amazing what we came up with. It was extremely unique. We found out many years later that everybody, including Ben Rich, knew that this vehicle had been the design Rosetta Stone, the holy grail of aerospace designs, We found that inside this vehicle had microprocessors that looked like the neuroganglia tissue that you see in a human brain. The entire vehicle was found to have biomorphic characteristics, those being called biomagnetic or biomimicry. This vehicle, when by itself exhibited artificial intelligence, but when you plugged all seven flight crew members into all seven flight crew stations, you had an interface between their physical bodies and the neurological structure of the spacecraft, which was exotic metal and non-organic components, mostly crystalline metals in exotic mixtures. Holy shit. That way the vehicle became in essence, akin to a living being with multiple brain nodes. Yeah. Yep. That's Believe crazy, me. man. Isn't that nuts? First of all, for people who aren't watching, it looks like a stingray. Uh, without the tail yes yes um but yeah no i i you know and just based on reading stories from uh not stories reading um fine i'll call them stories (laughs) yeah yeah stories from people who've been abducted i (laughs) i do think the ufos are kind of they are they have their own um they can think yes they're conscious they're ai conscious ai yeah it's a very weird that's why you know, this phenomenon is so bizarre. Yeah. Um, the UFOs, the occupants, the people who get, get abducted, its they're all, all conscience. It's so weird. It's such a weird concept. Such a weird concept. And maybe, and that's probably the best way to create something like this, where it's linked to everyone's thoughts and brain waves. And maybe that's how they crash, because if you're using like radio waves, pointed at them like you know a weaponized radio radio wave just messes up the consciousness of the beings or something i don't know and they crash right you know right i was thank you for bringing that up because i was gonna bring that up yeah she carried a crew of seven humanoids who interface with the vessel's ai cortex directly physically through the head headrests Every time, headrests of their indiv- individual crash couches and their surrounding consoles. Yep, and that's crazy. They were talking about AI back then. I mean, that video obviously is like from the from the nineties, right? 
Yeah, and, I would say I would say that. And now we yeah, and now we live in the era of AI where we're just talking converse, conversing with AI all the time. But I mean, yeah. it, it makes sense cuz at the end of the day, if you want to fly a ship perfectly, absolutely perfect, you'd yeah. plug it into your brain, right? Yes, and, yes. And you say I want to go left, I want to go right. Up, Dude, down. I, I do that with work sometimes. I'm like, oh, can I just plug in and just, you know, instead of sit there and go between tabs and search this and do that, like, yeah. I wish I could just think it all. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, and so it makes it would make sense that, um, I mean, all this makes sense to me. Well, look what just happened also. Aurora's oh, no. Oh, no. Aurora flights to build DARPA's X65 utilizing active flow control. What does it look like? Okay, fine. It's got spaces here, but come on. Yeah, no. It looks like a, tri a big triangle. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a Roswell craft that now yeah. we're doing and no moving parts, same thing. Oh boy. This yeah, is definitely is nice. this is that that is definitely a craft that was uh what's it called? You know, when you pick up a UFO and you reverse develop engin technology. Oh, reverse, reverse engineered. Yeah, yeah, that looks reverse engineered for sure. So yeah, Aurora Flight Sciences to build DARPA X, uh, DARPA's X65 utilizing active flow control. Um, active flow control. What does that mean? Active flow control. So they want this initiative marks a significant shift in the realm of aircraft design, moving away from the traditional flight control methods towards the innovative use of active flow control actuators. Oh, they waited till 2024 to do this. Thanks, DARPA. <laughs> You know, I'm sure now, now they're like, all right, here you go. We've had this for 50 years. Let's just start. All, all of those, all of those taxes we paid that definitely went to good causes. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So anyway, it's cool that now we're finally doing exactly what they just described the Roswell craft was doing. It was riding the air, riding whatever the ether. So that's what this is too. That's what it's doing. It's doing the exact same thing or the beginnings of it. Yeah. Just wait till we get to the, uh, <clears throat> the gravity part oh yeah man we'll it will get there there was some evidence there's some articles in the 50s saying that oh in 10 years it's gonna be anti-gravity and then it all went black um uh, you know what movies i've been watching recently um that you actually might kind of find them fun are the godzilla yeah. godzilla and king kong movies they have all of this Ooh. stuff eventually they talk. <clears throat> they're flying anti gravity craft. They go to um, middle of the earth. All this stuff, and I I kept going like, whoa, this is all, because it, it it's it? it's it's funny. They go, you know, this is a conspiracy. This is so dumb, and then yeah. it ends ends up happening, and you're just like, well, <laughs> I'll go apologize to the guy that said this is conspiracy, or you know, yeah, go right. apologize to the guy that said this is true. Um, whatever. I, anyway, it's just weird how all this stuff kind of falls together. Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah. I mean, especially when you talk about like cryptozoology, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those subjects. Now, I don't know what you want to do here. I, I, this story just fascinates me. I think I've watched this three times. I know Doty is a, is a is a controversial figure. I think he's redeemed himself. He's he's come and told us that he was part of disinformation, but still, like, because he still investigated real stories, he just. Part of his job was to muddy the waters, and he did. And, you, you, you know, you know I, I I don't know what to think. I'm I don't like Richard Doty. Um, but, I'm I guess I'm on the fence with the guy. I'm like I'm like seventy thirty on him. Seven seventy seventy seventy. He's still a disinformation guy. Yeah. What do you um, think about this story? When you talked about it, you know, I've heard this story many times. Um, I I do think we should watch. No, we don't. Do we? We don't have time for that. Watch I mean, that. yeah, it'll be it'll be nice. I think I think a lot of our listeners would like to hear it. But like, what should I should I put it on like double speed or something like that? Where <laughs> that way, you know, what I mean, like, it won't. Can, I don't think it'll sound that bad. Wait, can you sum it try. up? Let's try. Well, all right. So here he. Okay, so apparently, do you know the Zamora incident? Apparently, yeah. the the blue book officer was his uncle. Who did See, that? this is you've already you've pushed me to no, but we talk about this. You you've asked questions like, okay, so how do I, how would I get into this? And we've said we've said like you have to be born into it. Yeah, no, right. right. Yeah. So he's born into it, and it, uh, and I don't know. I I would like I'm 50 50. I know you're 70 30. I'm 50 50 on the guy. 
I just, if I'm your worried. job, if your job is to lie, and we've talked about the CIA and the government, that essentially you, you never stop working for them at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. fascinating, fascinating story. So wait, but, all right, let's listen to it. Yeah. Okay, no, that's not here. Okay, so good. At least he was talking about other stories. So this is another one. This is the one that, um, let me try doing 1.5. That way it won't sound too, it won't sound like a chipmunk. They were outside. <laughs> they saw this UFO come in and land. The two technicians immediately. All right, wait. So he's talking about uh, in New Mexico, there's a there's a site. We skip this, but there's a site out there that that shoots lasers at oncoming like Russian satellites to blind them to what's going on at the base. Mm -hmm. So these two technicians were sent out to fix this thing, and then then he tells the story. They saw a UFO land. He notified the radar site command center. The command center advised the UFO was on their radar screen, traveling from the west, but they lost it. The UFO over the radar site because the UFO had landed. The two technicians observed the UFO swirl on the ground before coming to rest adjacent to a maintenance building. The bottom panel of the craft opened. Two strange looking beings exited the craft. Now, these are words that came from the technicians. Uh, they were thoroughly interviewed. And what I'm telling you is their description of what they saw. The creatures were described as four foot tall, thin appearance, wearing a helmet with a long tube connected to a tank on their back. The creatures had arms and legs. The creatures moved their arms in several different motions, apparently trying to communicate with the technicians. Uh, what the te technician said was they were trying to make hand signals, moving their hands back and forth. The technicians so spoke them English off. to the creatures. But the creatures didn't seem to understand. The <laughs> That's what One it of the looks technicians like spoke Spanish, but the creatures again didn't understand the language and didn't respond. What does that middle finger One mean? One of the creatures produced a long cylinder. Yeah, yeah. What does that middle finger mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's universal, right? I mean, just I go, just go bowling, and, and then you know you'll hit everything except that middle one, and it still looks like a middle finger. <laughs> it's like, ha ha ha, f you, you missed. <laughs> I would love it if the aliens came down, um, and they're trying to communicate, and we finally, after you know years and years of research, trying to figure out what are they saying, what are they saying, <laughs> and. <laughs> What they're saying is, go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you guys are idiots. Yeah. All right, so they pull out this device. Obviously, you know, I, other than what the officers think it is, I would say, I would, anyway, here, let's just listen. Under from its suit, the creature moved towards the technicians with the cylinder, attempting, the technicians thought, to give this cylinder to the technicians, fearing that the object might be radioactive, or a weapon, mm -hmm, the course. technicians refused to accept the cylinder. Okay. One of the creatures made a hand motion indicating Idiots. for the technicians to enter the craft. See, that, that's unfortunate. Now, I know these guys are trained to always think everyone's an enemy and everything's weaponized because we weaponize everything. It doesn't mean other species do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so they were very paranoid about this object, which is sad. Now, you know, when, you, when we listen to the rest of the story, it's very unfortunate. I mean, I guess if you were in their, in their position, it's hard to say how we'd act too. Yeah, yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, it's one of those things um, where you just you, you don't know what another person's intentions are. I mean, uh, yeah, these thing lands, two beings come out. You can't, you can't, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a top secret base, and then they pull out something. You might think they're Russians, you know. Maybe. Yeah, and you, and you can't communicate, and they're doing, they're giving you the finger. Yeah, and, and then. <laughs> They're trying to hand you some sort of cylinder. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I know it's complicated. It, yeah. Yeah. So, all right, so let's, let's just continue. It's a crazy story. Motioning towards the craft in a gesture that the technicians thought meant for them to walk among uh, inside the craft. At this point, the technicians radioed to the command center to send help to their location. Two Air Force military policemen arrived, both carrying a handgun and rifle. The standard weapons... Uh, worn by Air Force security police personnel or military police was a 38 revolver, six shot, and an M16 rifle, which contained a magazine with uh, normally 20 rounds in it. And what the military policemen were trying to do was challenge uh, the creatures, which would be typical of military police. Identify yourself, keep your hands in the air, things like that. But the creatures didn't seem to understand anything that the MPs were doing or saying. One of the creatures walked to the, to the senior MP and attempted to grab, grab his arm. The MP pulled away aggressively 
This appeared to scare the creatures. Now, you have to put yourself in the military policeman's shoes. Uh, these creatures yeah. weren't human looking. Yeah. Uh, this happened in a very classified area. Uh, these MPs are highly trained to protect Air Force resources, especially top secret resources. So they were on their probably highest state of alert. And these creatures, non-humans, mm -hmm. couldn't understand anything that these military police were saying or trying to do. One of the MPs pointed his rifle, an M16 rifle, at the creature <laughs> and motioned for it to come to him. Freaking AI. He's like, and the man AI. Was like, I know. No, I'm laughing at the at the picture. AI <laughs> oh, cannot drop. Yeah, look at the, how many fingers. One, two, got. three, four, five, six. All right, or yeah. more. One, two, three, four, five, no. six, seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tip. Uh, we're not it's, losing. It's our, funny. We're it's not funny losing. Our, we're not losing yeah. our jobs yet. Right, I, but it's funny how like the aliens said, "Come with us into the UFO," and then they call the MPs, and he's like, "No, no, you come with us inside." <laughs> <laughs> I think it's typical behavior, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Which meant, you come with me. <laughs> the creature didn't understand. Both creatures then returned to their craft. The panel closed, and the craft took off towards the southwest. The creatures left the cylinder on the ground. Now, here we are in a situation where uh, there was a confrontation between uh, U.S. military personnel and extraterrestrials. We didn't know, or the military personnel didn't know the intentions of these extraterrestrials. You got to understand. just wanted to say hi, man. These military personnel, even though they're highly trained, probably were extremely scared too. They were confronting something that they've never seen before. Uh, they didn't know what the creature's <laughs> intentions were. Were like, they hostile? That. Why did they land in a top secret facility? And as one of the military policemen told us later, he his first impression was, could these really be Russian personnel or Soviet uh, deep cover operatives? The commies flying in some strange yeah. craft into a top secret facility maybe to attack it to steal something or just obtain intelligence now i know that's kind of out there for some people to believe but you understand that if you're put in a situation like the military policemen were put into you put all sorts of things probably ran through your mind and what their main concern at this point was the cylinder that was left on the ground there's no way that the military policemen could have detained these two creatures they tried they tried to have him come have them come with them but the creatures didn't they returned Did to the they ever did while they, they were returning to the craft on the cylinder yeah so that's maybe let's skip to that part um here's so th this yeah. this really it's really not that far-fetched um what's that group of people that live off the coast of um is it india yeah. and they've never yeah. been contacted by um you know general society and they brazil always... is full of them too the ones in the forest mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah um you know, if you can just imagine if, if you're some sort of, you know, you're a tribe in, in the modern day and if a helicopter lands, you know, right off the side of your um, of your, you know, main main center when, where you live um, and, and tries to communicate with you. Obviously, you know, there's no communication that's possible. You know, you try different languages, you try hand signals, right. all that, all, all that jazz. And they hand mm -hmm. you something, you go, what, you know, what the hell is going on? Right. Um, it's, it, but I wouldn't mean, you think they're trying to communicate with you then with that? I mean, because that's what turned out it is. I mean, now, you know, but so they, they went, they retrieved this thing. They, they tried to blow it up. They had the hazmat guys come out. They had the bomb ordinance people come out and then they brought, they eventually brought it to the lab. But what I'm trying to say is this this tribe outside of wherever the hell it is, some island yeah. tribe, they kept throwing spears at the at the oh. um, I think it was a helicopter. OK, you, you know. They, oh, I know. What you, no, that was that was Brazil. It was a drone. Yeah. Yes, it was a drone. They had a drone go over there and they were looking at it and they were throwing spears at it. Yes. And pointing at it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that's just human behavior, unfortunately. It is, yeah. We think everything is uh, you know, out, out to get us. We're just trying to survive. Yeah. So kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Yeah. Destroy it. people. <laughs> Shoot first, right? Ask yeah. <laughs> Shoot first. Ask questions later. Yep. And there's many stories about alien encounters where people shoot them. You yep. know, many we've talked about in the fifties and stuff like that. They oh just man, the shotgun just start shooting at them. Yeah, and there's so many good stories. Yeah. I'm trying to remember that guy in the woods. Um, 
the, the uh, official story is that he saw an owl, which is just fucking stupid. Um, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Owls do show up at these things somehow. Yeah. All right, so here, I think by now they already picked it up They and they brought it to the lab. Okay, okay finally. great. It, the cylinder. It just moved the cylinder across the desert. Eventually, the EOD brought in a containment vessel, picked up the cylinder, placed it in a containment vessel, and then they transported it to the Los Alamos laboratories uh, through Sandia National Laboratories. Now, that meant that they took it to Kirtland Air Force Base, where Sandia National Laboratories was located. Sandia National Laboratories technicians did a cursory inspection of the cylinder, not feeling it was anything radioactive, but couldn't understand anything about the cylinder. They couldn't detect what the cylinder was made of, the materials. Really? So then he decided to transport the cylinder to Los Alamos and the National Laboratories in Los Alamos in Mexico. Once it arrived at Los Alamos National Laboratories, it was again thoroughly examined by the Los Alamos National Laboratories. And Los Alamos had advanced equipment to thoroughly examine this. The device was made of an unknown material and plastic-like material. Mm -hmm. A window was contained in the center portion of the device. A crystal-looking object was in the center. The device did not contain any screws, bolts, external knobs. The device weighed 2.5 pounds and measured 40 centimeters long. When a voice was spoken in close proximity to the device, the center or the crystal portion glowed. Scientists ah. then reasoned the device was a universal translator. So you think back to what happened <laughs> at Science <Ryan> Range. <laughs> All that. That's all they were trying to do. Is they're trying to communicate. Say hi. They're just trying to say hi. Oh no! I know. I know. I did, I imagine you put, they're probably watching from space, like what they did, like because it was funny. He was talking about how they brought in the hazmat team and the bomb ordnance team, and they shot stuff at it, and nothing would happen, and they put it into this container. They're like, "What is up with these people? We're just trying to say hi." <laughs> Do they try throwing spears at it? Because uh, kind of, we, yeah, we 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 shot we shot a bully at it, a bully at it. I know. I'm just saying <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's unfortunate that that yeah. us us humans, uh, you know. But it's one of those things. You get scared and you either run, hide, or fight. I mean, that's just how it goes. Um, yeah. we're, we're wired that way. So they were saying that this thing, uh, the thing in the middle, was it was probably a computer, the the, the, the thing, and then they couldn't turn it on because they needed the alien language to turn it on. Um, yeah, yeah. I can't stop laughing at that. That's the dumbest. <laughs> that is so funny. Uh, humans, this is a translator. This will allow us to talk to each other, and they get shot at, and they just run away. They're like, "All right, it's a bomb! Up. It's a bomb!" <laughs> That's so. Oh, that's, that's just that's so disgusting. unfortunate. Yeah, that that basically the people representing humanity are complete paranoid. Uh, you know, just everything is and everything is a target. Everything is weaponized. Yeah, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but here, let's, this is this is the end. This is this is a good part too. Okay. And in 1999, one of the technicians came forth. He had, he'd gone out of the Air Force. I didn't. Know. Uh, he attended the UFO convention. He approached Wendell Stevens, Lieutenant Colonel, retired Air Force and told him the story. Well, unbeknownst to Wendell Stevens, the OSI investigator that thoroughly investigated that incident was no other than Richard Doty, me. I was the OSI agent in charge of investigating this incident. I was there, I spoke to the technicians, yeah, and I spoke and to lost me again. the military police. <laughs> I know, and this and, and this is where I and this is where I get worried. Okay, yeah. now just listen to this next bit. Now, what he talks about, and uh, after you know you, what you said, it got into my mind something else. I'm like, huh? Okay, and we, we can talk about that. Saw this object coming on radar, so I was the one that authored the report. I was the one that spoke with EOD, Sandia Labs personnel, and Los Alamos personnel about this device. Now, jump to 2022. Mm -hmm. I had a telephone conversation with a person within the Department of Defense Inspector General's office some weeks ago. The ICIG office, they mm -hmm. call him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to talk about this incident, which he said was still classified. What I knew wasn't classified. Although he didn't tell me the author of this report, when he started talking about the report, I immediately knew it was my report. When I told him it was my report and that it should be declassified, he said it wasn't. But he said the report that he got was still redacted. This is what scares me. So it's still redacted. So Doty could be still completely lying because we don't know. We can't see the class. The ICIG can't see the classified report. He's saying right. that it's still redacted. Right? 
Yeah. Yeah. And yep. Dodie's sitting here saying, well, it should be, it should be declassified because the guy came out. The the Air Force guy came out. And that's the only area now where I'm now getting really paranoid that it may be Dodie's line. Yeah, this is why we this is yeah. why there's uh you know black SUVs parked outside of our door. <laughs> uh don't say that, man. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put an extra camera, I think, on my uh, on my balcony. That's where I hear all those. Uh, you don't have that already? I well, I have one on the door. I don't have one on the balcony, no. <laughs> where uh where just out just inside uh, we're doing the podcast. No, okay. Uh, this is disclosure era within the government. But that's obviously uh, uh, there isn't a disclosure. Uh, offices and agencies within the government's not cooperating with each other. All right, so he's blaming basically interagency issues. Why, well, why not? He, and that part is true. Uh, I yeah. mean, look at the disclosure bill we almost got through. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously some force at work. <laughs> look at those dogs. <laughs> Well, Richard's always on disclosure tonight. <coughs> I don't know if he's a if he's like a producer on or something, but they always have him on or they're good friends or something. But this here, he tells us that there are three new whistleblowers coming forward, and this is why uh, we're sharing this this mm -hmm. part of the show. Um, let's take a listen. It's pretty cool, actually. Who's coming forward? Might be friends of his. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, more, more mudding the water. Man, I hope not, but you never know. So, but let's take a listen. Keep your minds open. You know, there's five new whistleblowers, five brand new whistleblowers yeah. that have been cleared by the DODIG as whistleblowers, and this is a DODIG. Uh, the one of them is a uh, U.S. Air Force pilot, <laughs> flies F-22s. He chased a UAP over. Norway in 2010, the uh, UAP did uh, made some maneuvers that a conventional aircraft couldn't couldn't make, and uh, he, it also uh, flew so close to him that he could see some lights inside the UAP. Oh, really? Uh, he was also assisted by by F-16s from the Norwegian Air Force. Uh, the second. Uh, Whistleblower is a United States Navy SEAL team member. Uh, he testified under oath that in 1985 at Tonopah in Nevada, at, within the Nellis Testing Training Range, SEAL Team 6 was trained in uh, an encountering extraterrestrial creatures and uh, given special equipment. Uh, to uh, disable the these ETs. Uh, there's also a scientist, a U.S. Air Force research and development scientist who worked for the Air Force Weapons Laboratory from 1974 to 1995. He examined a crashed ET that was f found in Nevada during that time frame, 74 to 95. And uh, he actually, they actually tried to um, reverse engineer a small portion of the uh, non-human technology. <clears throat> there's also, uh, I'll, I'll leave the, the best for last, but there's also a U.S. intelligence officer who worked for my agency, Air Force Office of Special Investigations, mm. from 1969 to 1977. He was briefed into the program sometime, uh, I'm sorry, from 1969 to 1999. He was briefed into the program in 1977, which is a year before I was, and he was in, he was involved in an encounter between uh, ETs and uh, non-human intelligence and uh, U.S. Air Force personnel at Loring Air Force Base in Maine. I love how Thomas is taking this seriously. And finally, seriously. the best for He's last, trying to anyway. a yeah. senior scientist who worked for DARPA. Uh -huh. He also worked for Los Alamos National Laboratories, and uh, he examined a crash UFO um, and two ET bodies in 1979, August, he says August 1979, uh, at Los Alamos National Laboratories. And he went on to talk about other things, but those are the five whistleblowers, new whistleblowers, 
uh, that uh, were cleared back in uh, October of 2020. How many are we up to now? Oh, Rick, is it 86 or is it more? It's uh, yeah, yeah, more people coming forward. Yeah, well, I, I sure hope, you know, that's true. You know, I just take it all with a grain of salt. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Richard, for your um, your clouded uh, the, history. The guy got paid to lie to to people. I know. I, he got I, a guy to kill himself. Uh, right? Benowitz committed suicide because he was really seeing stuff, and then they t- they lied to him and said no. Uh, or he yeah, he was really seeing classified stuff, and they told no. him no, you're seeing aliens, <clears throat> and they're talking to you or something, and they started like. Yeah, anyway, they messed with his mind. The guy committed suicide. It's very sad. Very sad yeah. story. It's, yeah, it's a terrible story. Yeah. Uh, last week, also, we ended on the note that the Congress is getting a new classified hearing in a skiff. Um, this is... Uh, this is yeah. the, I got to find my phone so I can do the whole... Bow, 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 bow. Bow, 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 bow. Wait a minute. Yeah. Because the aliens are interdimensional, um, according to, <laughs> to this guy. Yeah, and Luna, and so th- that is a thing now. They're talking about not extraterrestrials. They're talking about interdimensional. And, yes, we've mentioned this, mentioned this many times on the show that it has to be something like that. It takes care of many of the issues of it, you know, of them being from, from so far away. Mm-hmm. Um, and how, they, can, yeah. they can fly in and out of water and mountains yeah, and all sorts yes. of things. Exactly, yeah. yeah. They have a way of, like, phasing in and out of this <clears throat> reality and theirs. Yeah. So let's hear what um what what their reaction is after the skiff meeting. Okay. Did you hear anything that you didn't know? Are you being frustrated by this? Have some of your colleagues? Well, call? obviously, look, the process is extremely frustrating. But actually, this is the first real briefing that we've had that we've now made. I would say progress on some of the claims Mr. Grush has made in his complaint, and some of the claims he provided uh to to congress this is the first time we kind of got a ruling on what the ig thinks of those claims uh and so you know so this meeting unlike the one we had previously when we did this briefing this one actually moved the needle very good so that'll lead to more public hearings oh i i think this one's going to lead to a lot of things i mean there's there there were there's a lot of new questions and a lot of new areas to ask and poke in based on what we got in this this meeting. Can you, get, oh, go can you get us give us a sense of what new questions you have? Well, right. So <clears throat> let me just give you a hypothetical because I'm not going to share anything from a classified briefing. <laughs> but if someone makes 10 claims and then someone says, well, we didn't look into all 10 because they weren't all in the report, but hey, we found these six very credible based on it. Well, then you would want to go attack those six. That's what I'm saying. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Huh. See, this is why I don't trust politicians, because <clears throat> if <clears throat> if this is all true um, and they've heard this, heard this stuff um, and they're just able to walk out of a boardroom or wherever they're having this meeting mm-hmm. um, and just be able to carry on a conversation like that, mm-hmm. um, you know, and a vague one. Uh, yeah, it's, it's wild to me, because if I heard this stuff. I'd either be running out of the room with my hands raised, you know, <laughs> punch, punching the air, or I'd be freaked out. I'd be so scared. And I'd be just going like, oh, my God, no, don't talk to me right now. I, I can't even speak. Um, and, and they're all reptiles, <laughs> these people. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, it's, it's, I mean, they're either lying to us or perpetuating something or just even just the obfuscation. I mean, that means the truth still is not – we're never going to get the full picture. Right, know? right. It's basically they're still coming to us saying saying nothing. They're just saying, yeah, oh, exactly. They're, it was confirmed. Yeah, I mean and, it's it's wild yeah. to me that they can do that to a camera to a reporter, politician. So, did you hear anything in there that moves the needle forward? That changes what you thought before? Are they stonewalling you? Walk us through <laughs> what what do you know now that you didn't know when you walked in? I just think what uh, the, most of the American people uh, fear is true is that the government, there's a concerted effort to conceal as much information as possible, uh, both from Congress and to the general public. So uh, I asked very specific questions uh, and was unable to get specific answers. And so that's a problem, and we're not going to stop until we get the truth. So do you think that you're not getting specific answers because they won't tell you or because they don't know? Well, I think what you see uh, is a, a very compartmentalized effort 
So by compartmentalizing information to such a degree that if you don't ask, ask the specific question to the specific person that has that piece of information, so we could take a puzzle with 100 pieces and disseminate it to 47 people. So unless you ask the right person for the right piece of the puzzle, you're not going to get an answer. And that's what's happened here. Good point. Yeah. 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 So how is how are we ever going to find out? Well, there's a way. Um, we're just not allowed to do it. Oh, Luna. Okay. She's the one who talks about the interdimensional. Uh -huh. I, mean, I mean, you hear the same thing with Mr. Christian Morton. So this is what I'll say. I'm going to reiterate, we can't talk about specifics and what we got into, but what I can tell you is what Greg shared with me in an unclassified setting that I firmly believe in. Um, I believe that he's telling the truth. I think that he is a credible witness. And what I can also say is one thing in particular that really caused me to be concerned about this whole thing is that Gresh had stated to myself, Representative Burchett and another member on the phone, that there were people that were hurt hiding this information and keeping this information safe and or trying to come forward with this information. What I can tell you is I believe that claim after now leaving. How much that's the, all I'll say on that. Do you think that the administration is sending the right people? Do you think that you guys are actually talking to the right people in these classified? I think that they are sending the correct people on paper. However, there is, uh, and it's become evident that there is an overclassification and that we are continually being stonewalled. My one concern is that we are authorizing money that is supposed to be spent on certain programs, and yet there is compartmentalization in which Congress doesn't have access to oversight in those programs, and that's a problem. Are you more concerned leaving now than you were going in? I, I feel the same. I think that I'm pretty much at the same space that I was. Uh, this entire process has been what facts do we have? Um, again, the credibility of the witnesses is, is incredibly important, and I think that we have very credible people. How much of this is the distinction of saying, okay, there are certain programs that we have that are dark programs that we need to be very careful about letting that information out? Some of that can be attributed to what people have said versus this conversation about Rush and some of the claims he made in the open hearing about non human biologics. You know, as of right now, um, we didn't get into the specifics of that in there, but what I will say is that it has become apparent that there is a movement, whether it's within the intelligence, intelligence community or not, to prevent us from finding out more information on this. And so we are going to do what we need to do as investigators to continue to pull on whatever strings and see where they lead. I think it's incredibly important to listen to the specific words that Gresh uses. You know, Gresh never said extra terrestrial or alien. He said interdimensional. Uh -huh. I think that that's incredibly important because those are the types of things that when we go in there, we, you know, there's just certain things that I think that it's important that you guys listen to on that. On government funding, quickly, I know you voted yesterday. You it's the whole interdimensional thing again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, and it's, uh, it, 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 uh, it has to be. I'm not saying it's all of them. It's it's a lot of it. Yeah, it I, makes more sense. You know. Yeah. I, Something I, on this planet with us. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you watched um, AJ's most recent episode. Um, no. I haven't. I want to, though. Is it good? It's, it's very good, as always. Man, that yeah. guy and his team just kill it. Um, but th they talk about UFO bases, USO bases underwater. Oh, wait. Yeah, I watched that one. Is there a newer one? Or is that... No, I thought that was the one, whatever, the most recent one. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, I think there's something else here. Yeah, it's it's obvious. And why wouldn't you be in the oceans? You know, it's just it's it's it 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 defends you against anything that's happening with the sun. It defends you against asteroids. It hides you from the surf the surface animals, yeah. <laughs> the surface beings. Well, you know? and like you brought up in the episode, um, the humans, uh, we know more about space than we do the ocean. Yeah. We've explored, you know, more of the moon than we have the ocean. It's actually kind of terrifying to think about because it's right next door. Yeah, and because we can't go deep, our satellites can, and you know they have um, scans and really crazy trenches mm -hmm. and and stuff like that. But yeah, our our technology cannot go very deep, even though our navy and submarines see these things going at you know what is it like three thousand miles per hour under underwater, and it's so crazy that they just ignore it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, really, yeah, sorry, really quick. Like, the giant squid was supposedly a myth, and then we started discovering them. Yeah, like, like what else is down there? What else is down there? Yeah, 
We just don't know. It's 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 the majority of the planet. Yeah, you know, we sit there. We're like, yeah, we mapped out the world. Yeah, you mapped out thirty percent of it. That's yeah, what you exactly. Mapped out. <laughs> yeah. So Grush, I don't know if you heard about this. So he was in New York City. Uh, Grush appears to have given a private presentation. This is from UAP James on X. He gave a private presentation of 60 people organized by a quote unquote Wall Street bigwig. He says an adversary country is considering UFO disclosure to get to get ahead of the U.S. Is Russia. They're talking about Russia. The non-human intelligence related to UAP looked like the typical gray alien. Mm hmm. The U.S. has a UFO craft with a diameter of 40 feet. However, once a person goes inside, it appears to be the size of a football field. The craft is able to produce one terawatts of energy. Yeesh. I don't even think the entire planet does that. Um, I mean, our, our energy. Only about 50 people know the full extent of the nature of the UFO phenomenon. Grush remains hopeful of you for UFO disclosure. So this was an yeah. un, unauthorized uh, picture they took at the event. It was deleted uh, quickly after that. Of course. Yeah. Standard procedure. Yeah, exactly. And I think even on uh, you sent me this one. David Grush firsthand experience. He was part of an extremely secret program that figured out how to track and find UAPs in our atmosphere and near Earth orbit. I mean, it's scary stuff, man. It really is. And yeah. I don't like this whole, I mean, I under, I guess I understand it. This whole top secret, you know, mm. secrecy thing. I, I just, our, our government works for us. People always forget that, including our own government. They work for us. They need to be telling us everything that's going on. And they'll say, well, we're weaponizing it to protect you, you yeah. know. The problem is the weaponization of this. Why don't you why don't you make it to help humanity? Give us free energy, you know, stuff like that. But it's unfortunately it's not. It's made for yep. uh, global hegemony. Yeah. It's... And that goes yeah, that goes for all of them, right? I mean, China, Russia, yeah. all they want to do is weaponize this. It's just it's just also frustrating. Yeah, so he was doing that and then oh, TMZ had their uh UFO revolution. <laughs> to expose the biggest cover-up in history so it was a three-part series i did not watch even one i i i didn't either i with teams it's it's tough because they it's all about chasing uh they they don't they, they it's about you know they they're chasing stories that don't matter to most people this one is a big one yeah so it's on Tubi for free. People can watch it now. What came out of that is this that's been going crazy, right? You saw the jellyfish. Yeah, this is a this is a really really weird one to me. I, I mean, this might be the most. I mean, this is high strangeness. This is stuff you just can't explain. Yeah, um, this is out of a base in Iraq. Uh, this is clear. They were right. They, so okay, so yeah, it's it's clear footage. Um, and it's this jellyfish looking like a uh, thing. I, I don't even, I, I don't know. Is this a UFO? Is this an alien? <laughs> it's so hard to explain. Um, but apparently, so Florida, <laughs> <Falcon Beach, laughs> this base, um, that's on, that's on film. And apparently it sat in the water for 20 minutes or whatever, and then mm -hmm. just left and they couldn't find it. It took off. He said, I think, yeah, he probably, he yeah. probably. Corbell mentions it right here, I think. Can we just turn it up? Oh. I was able to find direct eyewitnesses and corroborate that this event did happen. When individuals would target in on it with the optics, the way it was described, each of these hanging things, they were stiff, like they weren't moving. They had a geometric form, like scales, what was said to be scales, like an armor. There were also people with night vision who were out and they were tasked to, to go look for it, couldn't see it on the night vision, only in the thermal spectrum could it be seen. So it's, only in the only in the infrared, which our eyes can't see. Right. It's it's so it's such bizarre footage. I highly recommend our listeners to turn into viewers and go watch this because I mean this thing I I, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, it looks like it kind of looks like a jellyfish, but it's it doesn't. That's you know what I mean. It's when, just when you and I were talking off 
uh, by message with this. You know, we mentioned that it, it could be just interdimensional, and this is how it looks like in our dimension. Now we're yeah. seeing just a little part of it, like a shadow of it. Oh, here he talks about how it was in the water. It goes out over a body of water. I'm told it stops on a dime, descends into the water, stiff into the water. And for 17 minutes, nothing. And boom, this thing comes up out of the water and shoots off at 45 degrees, just like that. Just yeah, like that. Yeah, where's the image? Where's the video of that, though? You know? Yeah, I know, right? That's just so frustrating about all this. So this is from 2009 uh, in Turkey, in the forest of Turkey. Uh, have you seen this? Like the bird? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why they changed the the spelling of the country, right? Yeah. It used to be T-U-R-K-E-Y. I think they made it Turkey or something. It used to be, well, it used to be Constantinople. Okay, fine. Yeah, it's Constant Constantinople until the Ottomans took it over. And then it was the Ottoman Empire. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Man, I thought I was going to get you with that one, but. Uh... <laughs> well, there's a movement within the and within some fringes of, of, Ch of, of Muslim society that want. Yeah, they want to give yeah. it back, because saying yeah. that it was really bad for Muslims to do that to take it over and make it into a mosque. Um, because you know, in 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 Islam, uh, Jesus is highly respected, and the version and and, and Mary, right, Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why. Uh, there's a movement saying just give it back you know we weren't supposed to take it over so look at this thing oh i can't wait on live tv wait wait where is it? let me turn it down it is. so we're looking at snowy trees right now people I'm, I'm weird. Weird. oh i yeah it's like blue does it move yeah yeah it does this is from a helicopter you know and someone will say it's balloons i think it's a 2009 i don't I, you know i i'm getting so sick and tired of seeing balloons uses the excuse for everything oh, it's the new one dude. it's the new swamp gas and like yeah exactly it's always used now. Oh, it's a balloon. Hey, come on. Why isn't that moving? Wait. There it is. There it is. Oh, yeah. Look oh, at it more. What the hell? They're screaming. Yeah, that's super weird. Uh, it's clearly balloons, though. But see the appendages? Oh, yeah, man. It's like the same thing as a jellyfish thing. Yeah. Yeah, but it's in the visual spectrum, though. It's queer. It's clearly uh, swamp gas. <laughs> huh? Wow, that's <laughs> something else. I didn't realize there was like the only thing that's really different is I. No, I, I don't know. Hard to yeah, say. The appendages are the same. The top is like top heavy, right? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say the appendages keep moving, but maybe it's just the camera view and like how it's seen yeah. it but that wow yeah creepy look at that it goes up in the sky again you know you could say it's a bunch of balloons but I don't they're, know, they're changing they're yeah, four, I don't... They're... look at these guys their faces yeah he probably is great at poker <laughs> Ben, i'm the worst poker player very very interesting footage um that's Blue. definitely swamp gas mixed with Venus, mixed with balloons. Wow. Bye bye. But yeah, it's all, but it acts like balloons, like slowly ascending like that. But that's weird. I mean, I I get that it acts like balloons, but I mean, it doesn't even really act like balloons. Right. Um, wow. Yeah. No. Great footage, dude. What else did people? So did you see this? That now there's an entity that they see in there. Yeah, it's uh, the spaghetti monster god. There he is. Do you see him? He's looking. Yeah. Spaghetti oh, monster guy. Uh, have you heard of, you, you've heard of Pastafarian, right? Uh, no. Who? You haven't heard of Pastafarian? Uh-uh. The spaghetti, the, the spaghetti monster god. Oh, yeah. Spaghetti monster god. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the name of the religion is Pastafarian. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pastafarian. That's hilarious. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I do know. 
Okay. So apparently, is it being right? I, in there. You know, I uh, honestly, I don't know if I buy that. I mean, yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's. I mean, if that's true, it's interesting. Like the the drawing, for instance. I, yeah, I don't know. That's, look at him! Look at him though. Wait, it's in wait. thermal. It was filmed on. I don't and know. Why would man. he be looking at the camera like that? Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I think that's um, whatever that thing is called when you can see. Parodelia or. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you see faces in, in random objects. Yeah. I think it's one of those because this footage, obviously, it's it's Fleer, like we said, but I don't know hey. if you can zoom he, in and say. I see just said Spaghetti Monster. Yeah, see? Pop, right, so, the yeah. Pastafarians. No, I'm kidding. A marine, a marine who worked on the base in Iraq tells me he saw the full 17-minute jellyfish UFO video. He says the Marines nicknamed it the Spaghetti Monster. Michael Stinkowski says he worked in intelligence surveillance recogn uh, recognizance and that the video is from 2017, not 2018. No, man. Yeah, I mean, he's a total spook. There oh, is video that we haven't seen. Not a whole lot. All I can say about that is towards the end, it 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 seemingly just continued off into the distance, and it got smaller and smaller. Whether that's because uh, the the sensor was zooming out or it was moving off into the distance, but it got seemingly far enough away to where they couldn't see it anymore. Whether it, it dropped into the water or it just continued over the lake because there's a lake next door of the base that we were at uh but at no point in the at, towards the end of the video did it you, where you could see it drop into the water and then shoot off into the sky like there have been some claims that never mm. happened did you think never when happened. You watched it for the first did time you hear that, that so what like... jeremy corbell said this guy said it never happened interesting yeah so mm. well you know that what, that's what makes it weird going in the water and then <laughs> shooting off into space is what makes it really weird i mean yes this is weird too but and Jeremy Corbell has never um, claimed or said anything that's um, <laughs> really weird. He, you know, straight up guy. He hasn't threatened to jujitsu anybody. No, uh, no, he hasn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and, and I'm at fifty fifty with Corbell too, just like I am with Doty. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm very. Uh, Cor Corbell likes to make himself part of the ufo thing um, oh yeah he's done it now with tmz he's like the star yeah i mean he, and i've never once seen a documentary that features the person who made the documentary and then corbell <laughs> does it every single documentary it's every pretty crazy time. He loves he's it. the main character in every documentary he's made yeah it is it is weird footage you know of course the mick west and all those guys are trying to say that's eat eat balloons like happy eat I, I i man i just don't know this footage is so weird yeah no it's, it's definitely not balloons uh and especially that's in the ir there's people down here don't even see it or hear it or nothing yeah. you know i i don't think it's an alien driving some sort of craft like right the drawing wants to admit i think right. you know i just think it's something well, it's not that. <laughs> no, but th there's so, so I saw this in Iraq even when I when I was there in 2000 from 2004 to 2000. This thing was always in the air. Yeah, so, this is a drone before drones existed. Exactly, and that's what all these cameras are here. So this thing captured what we what we're watching. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Weird. That's what he's saying. Very weird. So, pretty crazy, man. Uh, yeah, very crazy. Anyway, it's it's fun. It's it's a fun mini series to go watch. It's all about Corbell. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But that but that's when he gets. There's a chandelier UFO too. Have you seen that one? So yeah, that was yes, I yeah. Have. Um, I don't have that queued up or anything. But it's just it's it's basically just an image of a chandelier looking again in IR, so our eyes can't see it, but our infrared sensors can. But, I mean, that's the thing that really stands out to me. Uh, eyes can't see it, but IR can. That's so yeah. weird. Yeah, and, you know that's why it goes back again to like the jinn or some other species on that yep. shares this planet with us that we can't see. You know, it's right. not like this is not new. Humanity has been living with this mm -hmm. for a long time. Now we just have sensors that pick them up. Exactly. Instead of religion and myth. Well, and I don't know. Have we? I don't know if we've talked about this or not. But like, what a biblical angel looks like, mm -hmm. and they're they're terrifying, and it's those kind of things exactly. where 
you know, where did that come from? That that sort of knowledge of of jinns, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. angels and demons, uh, it comes from somewhere. It's not. I don't. I mean, it's. I guess it's right. just a belief. I don't believe that it's just made up. Yeah, I mean, humans are the same across all timelines. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. We can't say that, oh, because you lived back then, they're dumb. No, you have to put yourself in there. You're seeing things. You're trying to make sense of them, you know, uh, just how we're trying to make sense of things. We're talking about interdimensional now. It's just because we have a word for it. And as science, we or scientific theories Mm -hmm. uh, for this, which wasn't back then. It was like, oh, God made them. So they're supernatural kind of thing. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Dolan was unweaponized. It was amazing. They did. They let him talk. <laughs> Corbell let him talk, which is amazing. Uh, it was mostly George and uh, Dolan talking, which was great to see that you know uh, uh, George Knapp would ask some questions. But there, there's some there's some great clips here. There's one here. He talks about the U.S. government. How he doesn't he doesn't trust it anymore. Um, here, some sympathy for them. Yes. Uh, oh yeah. So he was asked here by George Knapp. Like, Do you have sympathy for them for covering this up? So he answers him here. Gotcha. Always kind of have, but uh, I also don't. I mean, in, let me qualify it. So if you are in the military establishment, your duty is to protect your national security. That's your job. And these objects, although you know, they haven't done an Independence Day scenario, they haven't blown up anything overtly, they have at times caused problems, which maybe we can discuss some of that, but there hasn't been like an an obvious uh, destructive attack, a systematic destructive attack. There have been, pardon me, negative encounters from time to time. Uh, there's been damage done and interference done to U.S. military weapon capability, communications capability. That's all happened. But it hasn't been like they've been out there on the attack so much as seemingly observing. So on that basis, you know, ordinary people might just think, well, they're not they're not doing anything dangerous. But if you're in the military, you cannot accept that. Your job is to make sure that your airspace is secure, uh, your your systems are secure and so forth. And so they have to be very careful. And then on top of that, let's go into the crash retrieval scenario. So we can pretty confidently say that the US military has acquired exotic technology that does not come from here. Ten years ago. You, you couldn't really make that statement as confidently out in the open, but I think we all kind of understand, yes, it's obviously true. So if that's happened, they're protecting not simply alien tech, but they're protecting 75 plus years of their own research into anti-grav, into material science, yeah. into propulsion and whatever. And whatever one thinks about the international geopolitics, whatever one thinks about Russia or China, the fact is the United States has a very adversarial relationship with those nations. And and the military does not ever wish to, to expose that. It would be like if the president were to say, yes, this is real, they're here. There are so many implications that follow from that statement, eventually leading to what is the status of your technological development that you have been working on all these years? And it just threatens to expose that. So that's not something that they're ever going to be willing. On the other hand, on, on the same time, it's uh, no one wants to admit in an era where you're never supposed to believe in conspiracies anymore. No more conspiracy there is uh, for the U.S. government, which is having a very difficult time maintaining credibility in much of the world these days. For the U.S. government to say, you know, don't believe in those conspiracies. Well, except this biggest one of all time. But that, yeah, that one's true. The UFO, (laughs) but don't believe in the others. Like that's a bad look. So, but but now where I'm not sympathetic is um, even from the military's perspective here is uh, I don't trust the United States government anymore. I don't, I don't have trust in its goodwill. I don't have trust in its uh, desire to do good in the world. I just don't. And in the old days I might've thought, well, you know, it's a complicated world out there. But um, I don't see that. So what I see is that the United States is the global fire starter. It's my opinion. People can agree or not with that. Hmm. And so I don't really have a lot of sympathy for the secrecy being maintained by a system that I actually have come to feel is mal- malign, malignant, rather than neutral. Gee, I wonder how Trump got elected. I wonder how Trump got elected. 
I know, right? Yeah, that's exactly why he got like it because most of the populace yeah. were sick of it too. And yeah, yeah. He was just he was a symptom of that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Not saying anything about the guy. Just saying that it was a a vote against the system is what happened. And people are still sick of it. Yeah, and the system reacted, and we all saw the reaction, and then the whole twenty twenty election and COVID and all. That. I mean, it's just it's interesting um, because you know we're still we're still going through that and people in yeah. government can't seem to understand that, that, you know, we want our government to tell us the truth, especially about mm -hmm. this kind mm -hmm. of stuff, you know, we no, want look at him. Yeah. We... <laughs> he can't handle it. He said that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and he'll say it too, in a way, um, which is him, Tom and Tom DeLong, you know, they, they're trying to give excuses well, they're trying to tell basically, like, let's give these people immunity. It's okay. They lied. Blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's okay. Let's just mm -hmm. forget about it. But the thing is, they're not moving on. They, they're they still keeping it a secret. They're not yep. giving us disclosure. So there's no goodwill there. I mean, hell, hell look at our quote unquote intelligence agency. Um, you know, all these people do, they're, they're just trained to lie. Yeah. It, it, it it's nuts man it's infuriating because we all know they're lying and what the hell is they know that we know they're lying <laughs> yeah what the hell are we supposed to do about it i i, I just it's so frustrating i'm actually kind of angry right now i what what are we going to do right we yeah. can't we can't do anything no legally we can't yeah i mean unless they rescind these these acts like national security like, or, or heavily um uh updated you know where it's not such so cold world era you know some things can be disclosed it's okay you can't this truth embargo on reality right what steve bassett says yeah and that's what it is a truth embargo on reality keeping most of the populace stuck in like the 1950s Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to science, even philosophy, and just our just ideas of humanity, all that is just we're still stuck in that era. Yeah. So, but this is a great interview. It's so many clips. I think here, here's at the end. He says some really powerful things. Also, Dolan's great man. Yeah, he's he's, he, he's something else. He's he yeah. is good. He has got a great. He's got the whole big picture thing. He doesn't have any filters to you know the truth about our government and the deep state. That's the thing about Corbell is like he's. He's always trying to still protect the deep state in a way. Yeah. He gives him excuses. He's an interesting character for sure. But maybe that's why he gets these leaks, quote unquote leaks. Uh, know. You know, I, I don't know. I keep going back and forth if Corbell's an agent or not. Yeah. I, yeah I, I just, I don't know what to think. I, it's hard. He, obviously, he brings a lot of stuff uh, to the public, but um, I mean, I don't like the guy personally just based on what I've seen. <laughs> Um, you know, I think ultimately, and like I've said before in the show, I think ultimately he's doing good, but mm -hmm. he sucks. At it. <laughs> yeah, we've said this before, and we've used it, and you've used it as a net positive, and he increased, yeah. he, he gets more audience. The TMZ thing is going to get a new audience, he's, but these are all newbies that don't really understand like the geopolitics behind this, and mm -hmm. you know, the empire building behind, uh, you know, on this secret, yeah. Uh, it's yeah yeah but you know it's good to have dolan on because dolan will has that information for those people who are interested yeah i like dolan yeah we're gonna let the public know about everything that's going on it's too much yep let I me mean, think think back to the mentality of the 1950s hmm. which we were not around well uh, maybe i don't know I mean, 1950s was a different world and 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 think of the understanding that people had of this phenomenon at that time. Very basic. You know, look at the movies, men from another planet in metal spaceships. And <laughs> I mean, it's kind of goofy. And we look back and we think, well, <laughs> uh, they, there was no sense of the high strangeness. There was no sense of quantum anything. There was no right. sense of particular ways of warping space time to propulsion. They didn't have that because. And that was only just a couple of generations ago. So could that generation, adults of the 1950s, could they have really been dipped into the real full reality of what's going on? Probably not. What makes us think that we can? Are we 
we, we probably have a more sophisticated grasp than they did. But how much more? Mm. Maybe a little bit more. But what if, you know, our, our grandparents were at this level, we're at this level, but what if the actual level of reality is like way, way, way up there and we're just not there yet? So it might be difficult. Um, on the other hand, you know, I don't want to overstate that. I, I tend to think that we are developing a very good ability. So he talks about the whole fourth industrial revolution, but he mm-hmm. thinks that these beings or these others have um, guided us this way because if they want to, if they want a planet or they want to take over a planet, then they want it to have their type of technology and civilization, like a hive mind, AI kind of thing. So he's saying that the whole WEF agenda and all that, you know, the globalists and social credit system and CBDCs. And he's saying that it's these others doing this um, just so they can live here comfortably and take over, you know, yeah, in it, a way. It's a really scary thought um, because you don't know what the, you know, outcome is at the end. Yeah. And, and maybe that's why they gifted things, right? Because yeah. they know eventually it will lead to this type of civilization um, because they went through that. You know, they, they, yeah. they, their species have went through the same thing. So they know where it's going. So anyway, great interview. He has amazing insights as usual. Um, and he's Corbell again. <laughs> yeah, shocker. This guy seems to show up in uh, UFO uh, lore all the time for some reason. <laughs> so new David Grush interview, Fear the Beard. David uh-huh. Grush shares if he has any regrets going public. Grush and Corbell also discuss the Intercept hit piece and his past struggles being in the public spotlight. Grush says some UFO insiders were inspired to go public after he did, and others were discouraged. Oh, this is from Mike Colangelo on X. Overall, Grush and Corbell like the direction everything is headed and think the truth will come out eventually. Oh, man, I sure hope so. Uh, this is six minutes. I don't know if we need to listen to all of it, but this, he has the beard. Uh, and uh, the, You know, that, that uh, private event in New York, the pictures showed they had a beer, so that was yeah. Looks like it was around the same the same time. Uh, but they're friends. Why does it say mental here? <laughs> oh, on a shirt. <laughs> nice, nice, nice uh, choice of well, shirt there. You know, he's he's just God. He always is sitting in the same place. Look, he's got the safe yeah. behind him and everything. Yeah, yeah. Remember who asked him about the safe? He's like, "What safe?" Oh wait, who was that on? Uh, Russell yeah. Brand. Yeah, that's right. That's that's right. Yeah. He's like, so what do you have in this safe? He's like, what's safe? And I, what? <laughs> <laughs> I forget. That was like a few episodes ago. We covered it. Oh, he, he's probably so he's probably in some sort of studio. Um, and <laughs> you know, they're they've got it dressed up like it's his house or something. A green screen. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see if there's anything we can get out of this yeah well it's uh heading into the winter and i like to keep my face warm when it's windy uh-huh. here out, out in colorado so i just want to call you man i just kind of ask how's it been going since you talked in front of congress uh slow and steady i mean there's some congressional interactions that i'm a part of right now behind the scenes it looks like there's still momentum but you know based on world events recently hopefully that doesn't distract from this <laughs> in real but. <laughs> yeah, so for you, is there any moment where you've kind of regretted speaking up? You kind of had to, right? Yeah, I mean, I saw that that was the, you know, course of action I had to do. I mean, you know, I don't, yeah, regret it. It's, you know, I didn't want to live in the matrix when there's stuff like this that's being, you know, hidden from the world populace. There were certain colleagues of mine that were brutally administratively attacked. And it, you know, actually makes me very upset to, as a leader to see that happen to other coworkers. I was talking with the guys earlier today. We talked a, l- a little bit about reprisals, not just the ones that are private, but the public ones, you know, when they were attacking and the intercept and shit like that. Um, we were just talking about how hard that must be to kind of navigate all that, but you've done a good job, man. Appreciate it, yeah. It's always uh, hard to, you know, look at what the armchair quarterbacks and, you know, people who don't even know you want to say about you, so. Yeah. Like who? Were they human or non-human? <laughs> I know, right? And all, all those, all those hit pieces. I don't. I think here it's just about you know he's doing this for the people for transparency. 
Yeah, no, no it was a joke. Our, our armchair quarterbacks are essentially what we're doing right now. That's <laughs> is it? Well, yes. I guess an armchair quarterback, yeah, would be like you're not doing it the right way. Do it this way, right? right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's that's all I was. <laughs> that was it was a be- a joke that didn't land apparently. <laughs> I know what I uncovered with high confidence and, you know, I'm just here to hold the government accountable publicly because I felt, you know, that deep conviction, but, uh, you know, buckle up, I guess we'll see if there's any bumps in the road. I am driven by a commitment of both, uh, to truth and. All right. Sounds very sensational. The, the yeah. video. <laughs> now, oh, once yeah, again, I'm like, I'm, I'm glad Corbell is doing what he's doing, but, um, Man, how this guy is the main character in his own story. He like, is. It just it's unreal. It makes and and you know, there's a lot of people like this. Uh that's just the way it goes. But we have a new story right here. Uh exclusive former DGSE intelligence chief Elaine Juliet on UFOs. So yeah, she's uh she's the friend oh wait, Elaine that could is that a guy or a chick? I don't know. I don't. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. But it's it's definitely uh, she's he or she is French intelligence about and, and she's uh, she's interviewed by UAP check. Um. So here, yeah, she says some quotes. You want to read them? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. I'd love to read. Uh, what is terrible about unidentified objects, flying or otherwise? Uh, is that these are symptom systems. You know what? I don't want to read them. I take it back. <laughs> is what it is too there? small? No. Yeah, it, it is. Hold on. <laughs> wait, I, have wait, to, wait, I gotta wait, move wait. my computer. Let me oh. fix this. Let me fix this. Let me fix this. Let me do wow, this. Wait a minute. What is terrible? What is terrible about uh, unidentified objects, flying or otherwise, is that these are systems against which our armies are incapable of responding. Yep. We are faced with something we do not control. Uh, and that's very, very serious because it means that since we do not master them, um, we do not master them. If they decide to decide to attack, sorry, um, they would cut through us like butter. So it poses an enormous problem in terms of national security in every country. Right. And that's probably a lot to do with the secrecy. Yeah, um, definitely. So according to Elaine Juliet, Juliet, the most interesting characteristic these objects demonstrate is not zigzag flying, but their ability to enter into the water without slowing down. They continue underwater. Then they come back out. We have a large number of testimonies on unidentified submerged objects, craft that move under the water at absolutely incredible speeds. In the observations of such craft, we have noticed that when they come out of the water, there's no trace of water. They are as if within a bubble. Now, listen to this one. It somewhat reminds us of the Russians who have a high-speed torpedo that works like that. It creates a sort of plasma bubble around the torpedo, which means it no longer travels through water, but through a bubble that isn't water, but plasma. Wow. They are the only ones who know how to do that currently, and this torpedo is formidable, but that we're discussing here is much faster. We have testimonies, and we know that there's no country capable of doing this today. That's crazy. That's really scary, actually. That the Russians have that? Yeah, it is yeah. scary. Yeah. The force field, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is true that if we if if we told people there are craft crossing the sea, we don't know where they come from or where they're going. Perhaps there's something else on Earth besides us. People would panic, so it's better to say nothing. Oh man, yeah. what, what would people really panic? Would you panic if you heard Russia's got this and yada yada yada? I I mean. I mean I'd be. No. I wouldn't be no. concerned, but I. My worldview will change, right? Um, yeah, yeah. That's about it. I mean, it might last a week. Wow, fucking well, deal with it. Yeah, or a exactly. week of people going crazy and asking questions. Deal with it. I mean, you know, things don't change. Don't don't stay the same. Um. There. Oh, I don't know if you want. It. There's a there's a live report here. So uh, it's from a pilot. 
and this is him contacting FAA. Yeah, this was this was really interesting. Yeah, so and and now Congress just passed something where uh, that give pilots a, mm -hmm. a, a way to uh, to um, to report these. So uh, yeah, let's listen to this. It might not be um, really easy to listen to, uh, but I remember. Yeah, it's um, a yeah. Yeah, it's like you know noise. You know how it is when you mm. uh, pilots here. Let me turn it off. At about uh, 65, you said it was 30 feet tall? It was pretty tall, probably about 30 feet tall. It was going the uh, opposite direction of us. Okay. So from 024, was it moving at a fast pace? It was moving the way confirmative for 3024. It takes time, huh, between each... Yeah. Like, uh, zero, two, four, we're starting our descent. Number zero, two. We're starting our descent. What's yeah? I was gonna say, what's... what did the object look like? I kind of hard to describe. It was a just tall and uh, pointy, like a triangle. It was in the shape of the triangle. It was a uh, bottom and flat on top. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. Do you have a picture of it? You have a picture of it. That uh, the three zero zero four did not appear to be any danger. Is that too fast? Cherokee zero two four, and that object was about three hundred feet from you. It was, it was pretty far away from us. Uh, just... Yeah, it's too fast. Right. Uh, I thought it was okay. Cherokee 30024, do you got a number that we can mm -hmm. uh, reach yet just in case my supervisor needs to talk to you? It's just crazy to me that uh, all, all of these um, people who fly airplanes always seem to run into these objects. And they're not ridiculed anymore. I mean, there was a ridicule that stopped them. Like, oh, look at that. You know, right. I'm not going to say anything. So right. I'll be fired. Yeah. <laughs> just, oh, it's yeah. again just super frustrating. It is. Um, now this taken by NASA's lunar orbiter. Yeah, you it's sent me this. That looks like Homer Simpson to me. <laughs> I see it. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> just more weird stuff on the moon. <laughs> Yeah, look at that shadow. So, yeah. uh, if you remember that's that spider-like being that came out in that <laughs> one live stream. So yeah. there's that again, but it's from it's officially from NASA. Yeah, um, it's it's uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, I mean, what the hell is a? If you go back to the first photo, I mean, what the hell is that doing on the moon? No so idea. it's a it organic? So, so it's a spike. People who are listening. I mean, it even has a shadow and everything. So either there's something there or, I don't know, this is one hell of a Photoshop. No, and you can go see it. Uh, they they link the, the official NASA. Here it is. Uh, for the debunkers, here is the direct link from the university responsible mm -hmm. for the NASA images for this project. There it yeah. is. What the hell? I don't know, man. So here's a video of them zooming in on the I actual mean, image. <laughs> I don't know what to think. Um, it is. So we have a moon base, or why else would that be there? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, many conspiracy theories have said that we've been warned off the moon, and that's why we never went back, right? And then there's yeah. been many that uh, have said that Apollo said we were followed by big craft, and uh, mm -hmm. I think we did that last week. It was uh, was that yeah. the phone? Someone was sitting uh, next to Buzz in the other room, and and she heard them talking about this. And then he it's, denied it. It's so bizarre. I, you know, I honestly, I don't know what to think. Yeah. Um, just cr crazy stuff, man. The moon itself is weird. Like, you know, there's many books written. Oh, about it. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't so many. Yeah. yeah. And that how it's responsible for life on here. If it wasn't mm -hmm. there, then life would be different. And mm -hmm. uh, it's how many civilizations like uh, mark the calendar, like, you know, the monthly the lunar calendars are in uh, Chinese, the, the Jewish, uh, the Muslims. Uh, who else does the moon? But count, I think, yeah, many civilizations use the moon for for our monthly calendar. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're, it, it, the moon is in charge of our uh, tides. Yeah, and the tides. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah, and if you think about, like, uh, right, the, the, the gravitational pull of it, and I think I, I, I remember watching documentaries that has a lot to do with DNA, too, how, the formation 
of DNA that uh, it has to do with that too. That they, we wouldn't have DNA if it wasn't for the moon. Well, and if, if you want to go like deep, deep conspiracy, we, you know, we didn't have a we didn't have a moon for a long time. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That yeah. one, yeah. Before the moon, that there are people on this planet that said before the moon, mm -hmm. this this happened. So that it was like parked there. Something yeah. came here, parked it there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's actually that's one of my favorite. <laughs> that's one of my favorite theories. I don't I don't know if it's true or not, um, but yeah, just something shown up in in the night sky would be pretty pretty damn wild. Yeah, and well, there's so many anomalies with it, right? How large it is that it's right. static, that it's static, like like it only we only see one side of it. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? That it's hollow, right? Yeah. Oh man. Or su supposedly hollow. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah. yeah there are so many theories about the moon. It, I, I, you know, I don't know, and now people are finding, and you know, when uh, when you mentioned Buzz, yeah. I mean, these people all saw really weird things, and I don't know what what the hell, dude. Remember that, like when they came back from the moon landings, how depressed they look. They're, yeah, they're the first the first press conference, they were all depressed. Like I think we shared that on the show, right? Yeah, like they were defeated. Yeah, you know, instead of like celebrating what they did. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You'd think it'd be like one of those things where you win the Super Bowl and you come no. running back in, and then they're sitting at this table with their heads down. And yeah, just being like, weird. yeah, we were there, you know. Yeah. It's the moon. Something <laughs> weird happened there. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, so now Lockheed's secret UFO crash retrieval program exposed by whistleblower. This is a whistleblower. This is on redacted. Yeah. Obviously, but I mean, this just came out. Does Lockheed Martin have its own alien recovery team? You heard me right. A team that gets a phone call, goes out, and recovers downed UFOs. A whistleblower, Lockheed Martin, has now come forward to our next guest with stunning details about Lockheed's secret alien recovery program and reverse engineering program. But this whistleblower went on to claim, this is where it gets even more bizarre, that a Lockheed reproduction craft crashed in Nevada in 2004 at the same time, it was also being tracked by JSOC, J-S-O-C, which, of course, is the Joint Special Operations Command. They both descended on this crash site at the same time, and a firefight ensued where two members of JSOC were killed, what? according to this whistleblower. That Lockheed whistleblower came forward to our next guest, John Stewart, former candidate for Congress in the Office of Illinois. Governor joining us today on Redacted is that former guest. Oops, 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 oops. What's happening here? Oh no, we're stuck at loading screen, people. <laughs> oh no. Uh, so anyway, we're not spending too much time on this because it just came out. Redacted, anyway. who created a shockwave the last time he was on, talking, of course, about the experiencing interruptions. Yes, I am. Oh no, uh, but isn't that nuts? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but a fight, seriously. I mean, uh, the government can just go and destroy Lockheed Martin. Like, I don't understand. I mean, fine. They, even if they fund congressmen and senators, and that doesn't make any sense. I don't uh, know yeah. why they get away with that. Uh, yeah. Uh, it makes no sense to me. Well, let's, let's see what this guy says. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> yeah. His face. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> And they also developed their own recovery team. So this team, listen to me very closely, uh, folks, so that this team could pounce on their Lockheed craft that they reproduced that might have crashed so the government didn't get it. Does that make sense? So we've created this really advanced extraterrestrial-esque uh, craft. We've lied to the government about it because we're going to hide this and just use it for our own good for whatever that is. And if this crashes, we need to recover it before the government recovers I, it. I, you know, so the story is crazy. I, I don't, I don't think uh, because we've, we've talked about this before, and, and I mm -hmm. do believe it's the truth. Our government is like fifty years ahead of, yeah, uh, you know, normal culture mm -hmm. in, in the world. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm. I'm, I question this a lot. I mean, it's a policy too, right? The government has that policy. Yeah. <clears throat> so anything we see, AI, um, cryptocurrency, all that, they've already figured that out way before. And that's because of planning purposes. So they don't, like, there's no, like, shock or they're not surprised. And Right, exactly. 
Yeah, but that that's their official policy to be 50 years ahead of the world. And so can you see a, a you know, government, the US government getting into a firearms fight with a company um over you know some sort of aircraft? No. I don't. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's the government. They they have it's called the they have a monopoly on force. Yeah. So and that that company would be gone. <laughs> I don't yeah. care yeah, how exactly. connected. Yeah, I don't care how connected they are. Right. They would disappear. It would just be yeah. like, oh, <laughs> you know. They, right. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna tear you up into a million pieces and spread you to the wind. Yep. Look at this. Portrait, trying to develop yeah. Star Wars style defector plasma shield to defend drones. It reminds me of the Russian uh what do you call it? Uh their torpedoes. Yeah, this is pretty this is pretty wild. According to Chinese news sources, Chinese scientists have allegedly harnessed plasma to, to develop a working energy shield for drones and other military tech. Oh, man, this is scary if true. Well, see, the thing is, is what they said is China does not overclassify this issue. And it's it's an open secret, I guess. It's freely shared with the scientific community in China. And that's why they're doing this stuff. We might have it fine, but I'm just saying, like, if they ever like beat us or go ahead of us, it's because it's not stove piped, and it's shared within with the scientific community to, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. uh, to advance it. You know, they keep saying, "Oh, it's advancing really slow." I mean, if scientists can't talk to each other, uh, you know, and coordinate, it's not going to advance. That's just how right things work, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it goes here, Chinese scientists have allegedly developed an energy shield to protect some of its military assets, the South Morning Post reports. Utilizing a special kind of plasma, the energy shield is designed to resist potentially harmful microwaves from damaging delicate electronics. If the claims of its existence are true, the new shield is a significant leap in directed energy technology, especially in the ongoing aerial to anti-aerial arms race. Woof. Well, at least we've got our space force to uh, help us yeah. out. <laughs> and you know, many people say that's why Trump did it. It's like trying to force yeah. the, secret, the secret to come out, right? Where it's not just in the air force anymore, or the navy. Yeah, or the navy. Uh, the United States has already put into use equipment such as the active denial system, the vigilant eagle system, uh, cruise this missile carrying uh, high power microwave warhead. This is uh, Star Wars from Reagan all over again. Yeah, and I, and maybe that stuff was maybe maybe now that technology is coming out because that was the eighties, right? Yeah. Yep. So we're talking about almost fifty years now. Well, twenty and twenty. Oh man, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm getting old, dude. We are. And what's this now? Oh, um. Oh, this is a mainstream article on the whole Miami thing. Remember last week? Yeah, that was super, super weird. Um, God, so many cops. So many cops. And But what this article is saying, uh, the Miami police came out. Where is it? Uh, the, well, they're saying, instead of an alien invasion, a huge group of juveniles were being dealt with by the large police fleet, who oh, allegedly no. were also setting off fireworks causing panic across the mall. An arrest report said, according to the outlet. Right. Do you remember when you were 13 and you set off a bunch of fireworks and 5,000 police uh, 100 cop cars. <laughs> yeah. Just so dumb. It was 100 plus cop cars. What a crazy, those videos that were coming out were just nuts. Yeah. Miami Police Department later confirmed on X that the sounds were fireworks and no shots were fired. So a hundred of them had to show up. Yeah, I know, right? Around 10 or 15 juveniles were also seen by police assaulting a man nearby. Again, why a hundred cop cars? Is it because it was New Year's? I mean, we have videos to prove it. It's not, we're not just making that up. Like, I just don't understand. None of this story makes any sense. It's such a weird story. But, you know, finally the, the media picked up. And it's saying the four teenagers are expected to appear in juvenile court on Wednesday. It's juveniles, juveniles, a hundred plus cop cars, yeah, helicopters. What? Um, 
they said they didn't shut off the electricity. That's apparently is they're saying that's not true. Jeez. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, none of the, none of this story adds up. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. But I mean, we'll, we'll, I think it's just going to be memory hold. It looks like people aren't yeah, talking about it, it anymore. It's, it's going to be the Brazil thing all over again. Yeah, so we thought uh, that it was probably military tech that they were testing out, like holograms, right? Something like that. Yeah. Um, or interdimensional beings that just found themselves at the mall. I just, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I've had a few interactions with the cops, and I've never seen that sort of reaction to fireworks ever. No, or a fight. Yeah, okay, fine. Maybe seven. Say seven. Okay, <laughs> ten. Yeah, Ten cars, you know, for a fight, but a hundred. I mean, it was just ridiculous. They were clearly concerned about something else, or they thought it yeah. was, I don't know, or maybe Miami, Florida has changed their policy where they have to send every single thing that they have, to, <laughs> you know, to, to shut down whatever was going on. Yeah, yeah. To any, any problem happening, send the entire fleet of cars we have. Yeah, I mean, right. it was absurd. Yeah, it was absurd, and that's what's why people are questioning. And then you know, it's it's not helpful when Miami police say, "Oh, it's okay. It's just because the juveniles, you know, set off fireworks, <laughs> set off fireworks." Yeah, and they were harassing people. I mean, do you need that much of a presence for that? Right. And yeah, right. Hey. Very, oh. very strange. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that makes conspiracy theorists go wild. And this is. Yeah. I mean, just use your brain for a second. None of this adds up. And speaking of conspiracy theorists, so this guy right here, he ha was in Harvard for 30 years studying. He was a climate scientist. Mm -hmm. He was producing papers on the climate. So he's finished. He's uh, retired. And he went on Tucker Carlson and told him that basically the whole CO2 thing is complete BS. He tried to prove it right, and he couldn't for 30 years. And he's saying... That it's the sun. The sun controls our climate. What a surprise. Yeah, shocker. The, the, right. elder, the elder god that sits, you know, three planets <laughs> away. Exactly. A star. We have a literal star right there that, you know, either gives us life or doesn't. You know, and we can see yeah. it with the turning of the seasons. When it's winter, we have no crops, right? So, <laughs> yeah, let's take a listen. To he's, really, he's, he's really funny. So you know that in, in even grade school uh, sciences, CO2 is a gas of life. It, when you have more CO2, the plant kingdom, the whole ecology, even the oceans, gonna have more, basically, ability, more fishes, more everything. More life. More life, essentially. That's why it's called gas of life. And these people want to demonize it as some gas that can cause global warming, can cause hurricane to run faster or weaker. I don't know what they want to have more rain, more droughts, and all these other nonsense that they claim. All of that, it just ain't so. That's the problem. By the way, this is how serious I am. I check everything they say. I check. As a scientist, you cannot just dismiss them. You cannot laugh at them. You cannot, you know, chide them. You cannot just make joke of them. <laughs> you check everything. So as a very serious scientist, and I publish scientific papers refuting all of this argument, Scientific papers maybe mean nothing to the average people, but it's really important. It's like a document that you have to document and then put out the proper scientific arguments about what is right, what is wrong. So that's what we have been doing at, at my particular center called series-sign.com. So anybody who wants more information about this, please go to the website, right? And study what we do there because we are the one that is truly independent from any funding agency, any money that you could possibly give me, like like Bill Gates, please don't give me money. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Elmore, please don't give me money. Oh, don't give me any money if you tell me what to do. You know, Even some of your money, I might not want it. But the point is that I want to be independent, just like you. In the media, I want to be fearless. I just set my own agenda. You don't tell me what to research either. I research what I want to research. So we've been researching on many, many topics. So on the climate change issue, I'm fully convinced. After all these years, even though we may not know exactly what is causing climate change, we suspect it's the sun. We have a lot of evidence to show that it's probably the sun. Very high percentage, you know, like was, I would say 90% were sure, <laughs> but not 90%. 100%. Or 100%. But we know carbon dioxide is not the gas, it's not the what you call the, like your thermometer in your room. 
can adjust up and down that you can set the temperature to be whatever level you want it. First of all, they can never tell us what temperature do they want it at. What is the temperature you want to set the global temperature? Al Gore has not been able to answer that. John Kerry has not been able to answer that. Because we know the temperature from the coldest in Siberia to the desert in Sahara. I mean, these are huge, at least 100 degrees or more kind of differences. Yes. I mean, who are you to tell me which temperature is the correct temperature where you guys are talking like that? They are talking as if they are pseudo-God, they're God themselves. Yeah. I mean, these people are so ambitious that in some oh. sense, I think we have to keep their ambition down a little bit. I mean, these people are not contented, just like what you put out there. <laughs> if you're, you cannot be ambitious when you're contented, but these people are so out of their mind in some sense that I think is misleading. And somebody had to speak out against them. I think you are one of those who consistently point out their hypocrisy, right? And I really find that the whole problem of this global warming is a complete nothing, which means we should do nothing about it. <laughs> Just go on and live life and adapt to it, right? So yeah, when... sorry, man. That's not profitable, you know. It's, uh... Well, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I don't really think CO2 is doing damage to the planet, but I do think there's a lot of stuff that we are doing to the planet that's bad. Yeah. You know, gar yeah, garbage dumping oil in the in the seas. I mean, but I, he... yeah, Sorry, yeah. What? No, I just yeah. you know, but yeah, CO two is not the that's not the thing that's that's killing us. No, it's the star that we have right next to us that has goes through cycles, and when there's a low sun cycle, it gets cold, and there's a high sun cycle, it gets it gets warm. Yeah, you know? and. I, I remember being a kid and going to the national park where I, close to where I lived and they were saying, oh, these glaciers won't be here by the year, you know, 2010. And yeah. then it was, oh, you know, you're not going to be able to see the, um, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 The glaciers. Yeah. Uh, I know what you're talking about. They, the signs, people were making fun. They had signs there saying yeah. in a few years, they won't, this won't be here anymore. I right. think they removed, they removed yeah. the sign. <laughs> right. It, yeah, exactly. It's just like, Okay, what are we doing here? I mean, and, and that's what it, I mean. So it's a scam. It's a scam to extract more wealth from people. People, uh, other people are saying that it's it's a it's a it's a plan because no one talks about China or India. They're building coal. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna bring yeah. that up. Yep, they're building or, coal plants. Or, right? How about how about these rich people that tell us, um, you know, carbon or you know CO two is killing us, and then they fly their private yeah. planes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know, Switzerland uh, to have a, yeah. a thing talk about it. It's just, yeah, it's just these people. They're hypocrites. They're completely hypocrites. Yeah, I mean, we all want a, a beautiful planet. Obviously, we all love nature. We don't want garbage anywhere. You know, uh, but then they hide these technologies. They'll give get us off uh, these. I mean, you know what really, uh, uh, like, really calls them out is nuclear energy. Yeah, I mean. There's no yeah. carbon in that. So why don't you say, okay, fine, let's just do nuclear energy. Because it's, like, it's like they don't want a modern living or they want the West to fall, you know, because only the West is like abiding by these green uh, policies. Well, China and, doesn't care. And, and it's just the dumb, dumbest excuses. Like they point to uh, Chernobyl and they say, oh, we can't do nuclear because look what happened at Chernobyl. And then you, you don't see anything past that. You know, you don't see all the, uh, the things they bypassed um and screwed it up you, you know yeah it's just it's unreal and then the, and then the ufo secrecy i mean the biggest mm -hmm. thing is people are like bring that stuff out stop talking about climate change and co2 and bring that stuff out and it's not a problem but they won't so there's obviously something else going on here you know yeah they know something else you know what it is i think aliens really love co2 <laughs> uh and that's you know that's they like eat it or drink it or something i don't i don't know yeah maybe it, yeah what was that it was that one movie you just reminded me of that was charlie sheen do you remember that one about these aliens taking over um yeah and like the kid turns out to be an alien that one yeah yeah but they were they were and, they were the ones who were polluting the planet because it would make it better for them like methane you know uh Something it was something like along those lines where they were well, terraforming you know, Earth with pollution, so they can end up breathing the air and kill us. Man, you know, maybe it's possible. Yeah, that's not crazy to think about. No, of course not. 
So South Africa. Um, South Africa. Yes, they took uh, they took Israel to the international. What is it called? International Court ICC. Is that was called. Yeah. Obviously, Israel is calling them anti-Semitic for doing that. Of, um, of course. For <laughs> calling them out. The go-to. Yeah. <laughs> there was some strong statements by South Africa. Um, I don't know if you saw like the Israeli side. They, they like lost their paper when they're with their closing statements. It was pretty embarrassing. The guy, we, still, we, we still haven't found Rayleigh. Uh, oh, yeah, Rayleigh. <laughs> I don't know where she is. <laughs> I don't know where Rayleigh is either. <laughs> Where is Rayleigh? <laughs> <laughs> like you'd think AI would pick that up, you know. I th I think it was on purpose uh, to do it that way because you get removed. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, you're right. So we can listen to these are the closing arguments by South Africa about yeah. what's happening. Awesome. Uh, this is not too long. On the basis of the current figures, on average. 247 Palestinians are being killed and are at risk of being killed each day, many of them literally blown to pieces. They include 48 mothers each day, two every hour, and over 117 children each day, leading UNICEF to call Israel's actions a war on children. On current rates which show, show no sign of abating, each day, over three medics, two teachers, more than one United Nations employee, and more than one journalist will be killed, many while at work, or in what appear to be targeted attacks on their family homes or where they are sheltering. The risk of famine will increase each day. Each day, an average of 629 people will be wounded some multiple times over as they move from place to place desperately seeking sanctuary each day over 10 palestinian children will have one or both legs amputated many without anesthetic each day on current rates an average of 3900 palestinian homes will be damaged or destroyed more mass graves will be dug more cemeteries will be bulldozed and bombed and corpses violently exhumed, denying even the dead any dignity or peace. Each day, ambulances, hospitals and medics will continue to be attacked and killed. The first responders who have spent three months without international assistance, trying to dig families out of the rubble with their bare hands, will continue to be targeted. On current figures, one will be killed almost every second day, sometimes in attacks launched against those attending the scene to rescue the wounded. Each day, yet more desperate people will be forced to relocate from where they are sheltering or will be bombed in places where they have been told to evacuate to. That's the point. Entire yeah. multi-generational families will be obliterated. And yet more Palestinian children will become WCNSF, hmm? wounded child, no surviving family. Oh my God! The terrible oh, new geez. acronym born out of Israel's. So, so those children won't turn out to be vengeful. You know what I mean? Like they're just creating more. Right. Uh, and yeah, that you're right. I mean, that's that's the point, right? I mean, what? Push what, them away. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell else are you gonna do? You know yeah. you're 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 pissed off, and you want to you know fight for the land, um, you know that you have. It's just it's so, you know, mind boggling. Do you ever watch the PBD uh, podcast? Which Patrick one's that? Bed Patrick Bed David. Bed David. He's on uh, YouTube. He's pretty big. I think he has five million followers now. He's he's a Christian Iranian. He has a co-host. He's Jewish. His name is Adam. And they had on Bassem Youssef, who's that um, Egyptian mm -hmm. comedian. And they got in a heated debate. And Adam was just saying, you know, the propaganda that's been um, debunked. And yeah, know, like one, one of them was like, well, 
Gaza has gained in population. That's not really a genocide, you know. It's just it, and Bassem's like, dude, those people have been moved from other parts of Palestine into there. It's not birth rate going on. You know, right. just stuff like that. And it's just it was it was really crazy to listen to. It's just it it's it I think it, I think of it like this. Like imagine if the governor in your state knocked on your door and said, Hey, this person is moving into your apartment or your house or whatever mm-hmm. trailer. And then they just started taking up more and more, you know, food, water, uh, your bills, whatever it is. And it's like, how how is there anyone that feels okay supporting the side that's doing that? Yeah, only people that think that the people who are being displaced are not human or they're just, you know, they don't count. It's just yeah. crazy. Because well, you have there was that whole story about all what was it the kids who had been uh beheaded and that turned out to be obviously false yeah, it was all false yeah, yeah. admittedly it admittedly just, so too yeah and it's just it's all it, there's all propaganda on one side there's only support for one side and it, it's just frustrating you know to witness that what's funny is that this happened <laughs> Chaos yeah. breaks out. When oh, this, man. Yeah. Now, this is a whole story we could get into for about <laughs> two more hours. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> this is such a bizarre thing. Chaos breaks out when NYPD discovered an illegal hidden tunnel under the... Uh, Chabad. 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 Chabad World Headquarters in Brooklyn. Uh, the incident escalated to prevent a, cem- a cement trunk truck uh from filling the tunnels basically basically uh the hasidic community in uh ny um had built these tunnels under uh, they 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 claimed it was because they were trying they were trying to say oh this happened during covid we were just trying to make tunnels to go to the synagogue Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and then Habad, yeah, blamed some teenagers, right? Like, like uh, rogue teenagers that did that. Yeah, I mean, this is just, this is wild to me. Watch this. There's some more footage that came out, like, oh. I, 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 10 minutes before we started the show. Great, fantastic. You might remember the video from a couple of days ago when we explored tunnels underneath of an abandoned synagogue in New York. What I didn't show you is everything inside of the synagogue. Oh, they no. had a daycare inside of the basement. Yep, the ripping kids. No, can't say that. Never but mind. Why does it say obey Jesus? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know the really answer to that. A room full of TVs and recording equipment. The number six. This course. very scary looking room. Oh my god. Oh a my massive god. auditorium. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, look at this auditorium. Massive. I mean, this and a cafeteria. Know, this just ties the star into of David on the ceiling. Jeez, this ties into the whole Epstein thing too. Look at all the know. chairs, dude. I know. God, so freaky. So freaky. It's like I'm playing like a video game or something. Yeah. When you find like you go underground, you find these things. I mean, this is just this is unreal. Un real these people are truly evil not <laughs> oh god have to say I know. Those, uh-huh. not, uh, 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 not all know. obviously right but... there are some evil people uh, we don't dislike jews um but there you know there's some people and just like every community they're evil yeah there's there's evil in all communities and it's okay that you can that you call them out and we have to call them out or it's just going to continue right. um so former NSA counter spy says Jeffrey Epstein was part of Israeli network. Yeah, you sent this to me. Um, uh, yeah, this is, I mean, this is something, this has been going on, not going on. This has been talked about, th- theorized uh, for a long time with Epstein. Um, yeah. And, it, and it, ties, it ties along with the video we just showed. Top secret Umbra blog. Oh, he's got a blog, this guy. Oh. Um, so it tied to the mega group, which was a bunch of uh, billionaires, and uh, not, basically, n- n- yeah. not 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 mega mega. 
Mega, yeah, the mega group. It's a bunch of Jewish billionaires that uh, atheists too, by the way, that wanted to push Israel and uh, mostly for th their job or th what they wanted to do. They were worried that because Jews are not very religious, right? They're known like, like eighty nine percent just not religious. And most of them, most of them are atheists, so they wanted to create something that they also uh, almost as a religion would love, and that is the state of Israel. So that's what the mega group does. Oh, um, gotcha. Yeah, but they, there's Les Wexner. He was part of them. This is crazy. Is this Washington Post talking about Washington? Yeah, Washington Times. I think it's a conservative yeah. outlet. Um, but this is a crazy article, which we'll link to the show notes. It talks about all that stuff. I mean, all this stuff was, was conspiracy theory, by the way, like just a few years ago. So it's yeah. crazy that they're mentioning it. Well, you know, just with everything that's been going on the last couple of years, um, conspiracy theory turns into conspiracy fact really quickly so true I have, I have a sweater that the conspiracy theorists were right and i don't wear it out too often but when i do i i do not get good looks <laughs> yeah well, of course everyone you know that that's what frust frustrates me the most i mean it's uh, right yeah so yeah, it, yeah i mean you know, look, it's not surprising look, Look at COVID. I mean, now the general uh, consensus is that it was developed in a lab uh, in China. And people who were saying that in 2019 um, were ridiculed. And then, oh, it turns out it's true. And, oh, we always knew that, you know. And right. Just, oh, yeah. 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 Exactly. That's what they say. Oh, yeah. Of course. That's what it is. We mean, of course. You ridiculed <laughs> me like a week ago. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So, you know, that's pretty much it. You shared with me uh, Robin, the late Robin Williams. I love this guy. He, he was, uh, he, yeah, I, I like him a lot. Unfortunately, he, he took his own life. Um, yeah. Was it drugs or was it alcohol? Or was it both? Uh, he was I don't, depressed. I don't and... think it was either. He was sick and he yeah. hung himself, if I remember correctly. Um, Holy shit. That's yeah. So but you know just the most wonderful guy depression, on the planet. depression. yeah depression yeah. had depression and it's just one of those things where you know you never know what a depressed person is going to do and you would never know it because they don't share that no especially not a comedian yeah right uh many of them suffer from depression actually yeah no i yeah i've heard that yeah and it might be because they just uh they depend on people reacting and laughing to their jokes. And, you know, I guess if you put so much into other people, how they think about you, it might uh, backfire at some point. Well, yeah, you, I think it's more of just, you're hiding uh, what's truly going on. You're hiding the pain, mm. um, you know, behind laughter and jokes, jokes and stuff like that. Yeah. So in this clip, he talks about Joe Biden. Obviously, this has to be around the Obama days because I think he this passed is, away. Yeah, this is old. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Biden hasn't changed. He's just a lot older now. Did you see when he was campaigning in Iowa? I wish, oh, I wish I can search for it now. How he was acting really weird around, around this little girl, how he was, like, behind her, like, whispering um, stuff. Dude. Did you see that? Well, I have to, if I Google Joe Biden and little girls, um, <laughs> I, you know, first of all, I get on a list. Second of all, I'd come up upon about a hundred videos because um, he just loves touching those little girls. Dude, it's really, really creepy. Wait, is this it? News Punch? News Punch got to it. Oh, man, I really want to get to that scene. It's Dude, really it, scary. It, I just, I, first of all, I can't believe that he became president based on all the stuff he said in the past. And second of all, I can't believe that he has any kind of support nowadays. I mean, the guy is a total a creep, a jerk, um, and a weirdo. Oh, yeah. We're getting into World War Three because of him. Yeah. I mean, uh, domestically, the the uh, the invasion, you know, at the border, it's, he's just, you know, in New York, did you hear about that? They closed down schools. Yep. yep. <sighs> it just, I, I mean, what what the hell are we doing as a country? 
You know, it's a joke. It's a joke. So we're not we're not a serious country. We can't even like support like like defend our borders, but we defend Israel and 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 Ukraine's borders. Yeah, exactly, we're not a serious country, man. Well, you know, and if you look at the uh, people who come in, to, like sneak into other countries, like China, for instance, you get you get killed. You die. Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> any any country. Yeah, you can't just here. No, they're they're. Because we have barbed wires, like apparently, like the border patrol are cutting those wires and just letting them in. Just uh, uh, unbelievable. I saw a video. I think I even sent sent it to you, where people are just they're just driving through the where the border is. Like you know, we have to stop and check and get all you know. Hey, are you a citizen? Yada yada yada. They're just driving through in droves. I mean, it is absurd. You can't do it's that in any other country. And they're not families. These are uh, what are they called? Military aged men, most of them. Right. You and know? we we shared the video about the the Chinese military aged men who had been found, you know, coming right. through the the, the Mexican mm-hmm. border. I, I mean, it is it's it's absurd. Like I, I I don't have a problem with immigrants. I don't have a problem with. Uh, we're all immigrants. You know, Chinese. Immigrants. Yeah, and we are. Our whole yeah. family are is yeah. are immigrants. Yeah, it's just when you do it that way, it's just it's something else. And it's illegal, exactly. And you're there for just. I mean, they admitted it in 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 Congress. Uh, Adler said it that basically they're there for uh for re was it redistricting? I don't, I don't get it. These things like they have ways of um, adding more people to. Um, to their district, which gives them a high, a better vote, and they're not asking. They're not, of course, they're not going to ask them for IDs, you know. And of course, right. they can vote. They're going to say, "Oh, of course, you can vote. You're not an American citizen." Forget the American citizens here. And Screw then, that. And then, and then it's racist if you say you have to prove your identity to vote, where every other country has that. I just, what just going hell? back to what you said earlier about how uh, the vote for Trump was uh, people retaliating against the system. The system retaliated against that and did this. That we have yeah, ten plus yep. million illegal immigrants. Yeah, I mean it's just it just, yeah. it just, it just uh, it gets me so fired up, and I I don't like Republicans, but man, I hate freaking the Democratic Party and. Same. And you know what what they're talking about and what their quote unquote beliefs are. I mean, the only congressmen and senators that are cool are the ones that are, that that got in there because of Trump, like Luna, like Burchett, like all yeah. those ones were for UAP disclosure are all Trump <laughs> people. You know, oh, because man. they want transparency. They want like it, it, he. That's what he brought. Forget the guy, but the idea that he brought of like that. Yes, we can have someone that's not part of the system be in there he's it's not like he was super helpful either he had one of the worst people around him you know covid was terrible yeah uh i mean good god that guy i I, such a piece of shit (laughs) yeah he might win (laughs) yeah i know he's like the front runner for the republicans right now and i'm sitting here banging my head against the wall actually and i even might have said this on a previous episode but my brother said to me in 2016 uh when he got elected over hillary he goes can you imagine if we you couldn't decide who to vote for because um you didn't know who you liked more (laughs) we're in the same position again well actually i mean who wants biden destroy this country I, this is what I'm talking about, man. I just don't, I just don't like understand it. I don't understand how he was elected the first time. I don't understand how he has support this time. It's just, yeah. Maybe it'll be Newsom and Trump or something. Oh, God, can you imagine? <laughs> well, let's have some comedy relief. Yeah, please, please. With Rob, let's forget about politics. Well, he's going to talk about Please bring in <laughs> some actually happy, happy, right. good stuff. Here we go. You know, we still have great comedy out there. There's always rambling Joe Biden. What the fuck? Joe says shit that even people with Tourette's go, no. (laughs) No. What is going on? Joe is like your uncle who's on a new drug and hasn't got the dosage right. (laughs) I'm proud to work with Barack America. He's not a superhero, you idiot. Come here. (laughs) When FDR was on television, there was no TV back then. Come here, Joe. Sit down. (laughs) But now we still have... 
So yeah. even him, even no him. wonder he quote unquote uh, took his own life. Yeah, I mean Hollywood didn't really. Um, well, what was his last movie? Do you remember? Was it was it a dark one? Was it a dark movie? I don't. The, the movie you're thinking of is where he works at like a photo. Yeah. Kind of... Yes. It was a horror movie. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Um, and it was it was pretty good. Um, but it, yeah, no. Uh, I was watching more clips of of him the other night. Uh, I just he was so funny, man. He, he was, was. So, and he knew how to be serious too. He just knew how to play a scene. Yeah, he's a great actor. I mean, uh, didn't he, he? He did he win award for uh, um, the what? Now I'm forgetting. Uh, uh, ben Affleck and, and Matt Damon, the one in Boston. That's what yes. you're talking about, right? Oh I, I don't. I, I don't know where he's. He's like Matt Damon's um, psychiatrist. Yeah, uh, I think he won for that one. He must have because I, I was just watching a, a clip of Matt Damon talking about it, and he's you know the scene where Matt Damon has left. And he walks in, or he like he's at his house or whatever, and he goes, "Son of a bitch, stole my line." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was com- apparently that was completely ad libbed. You're kidding me? No, he just and that Matt Damon and the director were standing there, just like jaws on the ground, going like, "Holy, you know, this guy is unreal." Um, but yeah, that's a great movie. What is it called? A um, oh, Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting. Yep, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, <laughs> great movie. Um, it, it, yeah, it, that's all it, we have it, for this week, cuz yeah. Um, but now it's time for Movie Corner. Uh, with, yes, with, that's how uh, Sleepy Bear Topher. Um, uh, Adam, have you seen the movie on Hulu? Um, no, no one will save you or whatever. Or no. no one, no one will help you. Oh uh, no, not yet. That's right. You know, I had it on my. Maybe I'll do that tonight. Uh, okay. The, the 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 abduction one, right? Yes, dude. I'll watch it tonight. I'll watch. Okay, it tonight. it's yeah, yeah. it actually it does aliens in such a cool way. Um, it's it, it's something else. No one will help you, right? That's what it's called. I be, I believe so. Yeah. Wait, no one will help. I'll save you. What? No one oh, will no, save it, you. So it is no one will save you. Okay. No one will save yeah. you. Yep. There it is. Ooh. September 22nd it came out. Yeah. It, it it's good. And it's, it's like it's what's funny is it's kind of like an artsy movie. You'll okay. understand. You'll understand why when you watch it. Um, Man, is it only on Hulu or can I watch it on Prime? I I don't know the answer to that. I'm sure you could You'd have to rent it or buy it if you want to watch it on Prime, but Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like I was probably rent on Apple or something. Cool, yeah, I watched it tonight. Um, man, I, you have to watch it because there's so much I want to talk okay. to you about. Okay, okay, I watch it tonight. I promise. Okay. All right. Oh, I don't. I don't think I've got anything else on in in movie corner. Uh, oh well, Barbie. Did you watch Barbie? I was supposed I, to watch know, Barbie. I live with two females. <laughs> I I haven't watched Barbie, but I'm assuming it's pretty good, dude. It's hilarious. Now, there's some like it's about 10 15 minutes of woke shit, but I mean, but Gosling is hilarious. Like, his <laughs> character is so funny, Ken. Oh man, I don't want to ruin it. Uh, <laughs> all right, I oh. recommend still watching it. It's not, it's not all bad, you know, it's mostly good. <laughs> I, I've the last uh week or so, well, I, I've been watching either Denzel movies like Denzel uh-huh. Washington or I've been yeah. watching the Godzilla movies. Interesting, and uh, and including the TV show Monarch, um, which I kind of, I mean, it's I I don't think it's highly rated, but I kind of like it. Um, Monarch. So is that about uh, like the about brainwashing? It's, no, it's about <laughs> founding the organization that studies monsters. Huh? Like is that it's a true story? No. Oh God. Ah. Uh, no. Okay. No. No, it's right. uh, but it's related to the Godzilla universe. You know what I mean? Oh wait, when you say Godzilla movies, are you talking about like the Japanese version ones or actually Hollywood one, Hollywood uh, ones? No, I'm I'm talking about the Hollywood ones. Um, I I, I kind of thought they were like okay. Um, yeah. but there's a lot of conspiracy stuff in there that is 
like they talk about hollow earth and mm-hmm. different universes and um, yeah things like that where i was just going like huh was that, it the new hong kong versus uh hong kong uh king no, kong king kong king kong versus i think uh, i think that's Godzilla. the second to last movie oh um, okay that was a good one i watched that one yeah was that the one where they went to hollow earth uh yeah that way that they think he comes from there where yeah godzilla comes and then there's a lot of high technology in there and secret yeah. programs yeah 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 that that's what i'm saying there was like a lot of stuff that i was like oh wow this is yeah i'm surprised this showed up in a hollywood movie right um, yeah because those ding dongs don't know how to do anything <laughs> at least not recently oh my god I don't, I don't know what path hollywood went down um I mean, that's probably the same path that corporations are going down, you know, the whole DEI thing, like, you know, uh, diversion, diversification, equity and inclusion. We could could do a whole episode. We could do a whole episode about that. Uh, Yeah, we could. (laughs) Maybe that should be our next deep It's failing, though. I think I saw an article that BlackRock is shutting it down. It lost like trillions of dollars, their fund. Yeah, because people don't give a shit about that. They go, hey, look, it's my black neighbor. I don't care one thing or the other about him because I don't know the guy's name. And it's not. I, and I don't work hate him. Cap, it doesn't work in a capitalist society. It, no. You need a meritocracy. No, what you need is a good story. <laughs> <laughs> and that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what they push is narratives. Well, they're not good at it because they're not doing a great job. Like the Denzel movies I was watching, wa- watching this. Yeah. This past week, uh, yeah. put Book of Eli and Man on Fire on your list. Uh, I haven't those watched years. that in a while. Book of Eli, I don't even remember it. I watched it though. Oh, I just don't remember it. It it ends it, like it ends up a blind like uh, priest. Yeah, like that. Yeah, it's very. It's like one of those things where it's religious, but you don't realize it until the end. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Two hours and twenty five minutes. Yeah, we're we're starting to get there like every episode at this point. It went quick though. I, I, we're not getting no. pretty, uh, fee- bad feedback about it either. You know, I think uh, it did. Uh, I just wish I could uh, read proper tonight. <laughs> it's the naps. I mean, I, I it I is. Can't, I can't see when I wake up. I, I, well, the thing is, when I sleep, it takes me like hours to fully wake up. Hours. I'm not kidding. Like two yeah. or three hours. Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> really? Okay, is... Maybe an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just can't I just can't do it. Um well, anyway, um thank you everyone for listening to the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. Uh that of course is Adam. Uh I am Pofer and I think I forgot to introduce us at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's episode 54 by now, I think uh, everyone should know us. Yes, Adam and Topher and Uncovering sure, so. Anomalies podcast. Um, what Do you want to? Wanna... Oh, yes. Follow us on Twitter at UAP the podcast, and you can follow us individually at Topher at all and Breakaway Civil. Uh, they don't allow you to have such long names on X, so it's, I cut it off. It's not Breakaway Civilization. It's Breakaway Civil. Um, we're on all podcasting platforms, all the major ones. Even small ones. We're on Rumble. We're on YouTube at Uncovering Anomalies Podcast. Give us a follow there, guys. We have a lot more subscribers on podcasts than we do on YouTube. Um, even though Spotify these days, you can you can watch the videos, but you know mo- most most people are listening to us instead of watching us. Right. Um, so if you want to see what we're talking about, obviously you can go on YouTube. But it, you know they do censor us a lot, so Rumble might be a better bet because they don't censor us over there. Um, other than that, support us. We have a link at the end of every single episode to support us, you know, whatever, even a dollar a month. You know, l- encourage us, let us know if we're doing the right job. Um, comment on the podcast, comment on our YouTube videos, Rumble videos, give us feedback, even on Twitter, hit, hit us up, let us know how we're doing. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah. I mean, we, of course, love to always hear feedback. Um, but mostly our goal is to be able to purchase a lot of cocaine uh, for the shows. <laughs> that way we can we can record properly. 
<laughs> yeah, we, I mean, they'll, they'll, if that if that's what happens, you'll know because there'll be uh, probably no flow to the our, show will uh, be conversation. The show will be thirty minutes long, and it'll <laughs> yeah. be super quick of us talking like this, and we'll be oh, all over the place. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. we'll pause every few seconds to take a line or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be it'll be great. I can't wait for those days. But we do want to do some deep dives. Our deep dives have well, we've done, we've done one deep dive, and that's done really well, which was Skinny Bob. So I don't know. Let's think about a deep dive we can do. You know, I know. I think, might be one. I think we've said that like a hundred times at this point. Um, All right, maybe maybe I'll put a poll on for this episode, and maybe people can tell us what deep dive they want to uh get into with us because i want to do i i wanted to do a deep dive on uh mothman um but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i did it myself and i was like mm, forget it <laughs> oh okay I, I don't think this is worth it unfortunately as oh, much as I, I, as much as i love all the stuff behind mothman maybe we should do roswell then since we you know it might push 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 it into the ether that they uh release that information this year um, yeah I think it's a good one too. There's like so much evidence there. There's like signed affidavits and it's just, it's, it's one of the, one of those things Roswell is that it's everything. Sorry. Hold on one second. <laughs> uh, everything is a story based on someone you've heard that they've, yeah, you know, that they saying. knew that was roommates with a second cousin of someone who <laughs> lived there. Yeah. And right. it's just like, it, it's so hard to, come up with any actual real information yeah uh but yeah that i think that'll be a good one though because i mean yeah no what about, what about the signed affidavits of all like the colonels and whatever that were on the base when it happened there's a lot of those the colonel who, who the colonel who heard it from his roommate who lived no no the ones who were actually there no the ones who were actually there <laughs> no yeah no that'd be fun um uh, anyway this um uh, has been going on way too long yeah. love you all so much love you cuz uh love you. and this has been the uap podcast and we'll see you all next week <laughs>